God damn it. Go someplace. What the fuck is that? Let's just get rid of that. And put it down there in the rubbish. Not important. We're gonna just use that. Where did you come from? You stupid boy. Over there. Oh, this is gonna be fun. This is going to be unreal. Thank God I've got bubbly. Let's just put it over there. Gee, Frank, I'm really glad you're here. Hang on a sec. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's do the shameless self-promotion thing. Is that same stress? Oh yeah, here we go. Let's do it. Hang on, hang on. Doing the thing, doing the thing. All right, just uh, fuck it, fuck it. We can make it work. We can make it work. It's fine. Can't do it from this side, however. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, non-binary folk of all ages, we are doing some, basically some shit that nobody should really be doing if they're in any sensible frame of mind. But I'm committed. What we're doing is unraveling a sweater. Or a piece of a sweater, let's be clear. Like, this is not the whole sweater. There's... I don't know what I'd be doing if this was the whole sweater. You know what? I think I need some more light over on this side. So, hang on. Turn on the thing. This is going to be... Yeah, that's a bit better. This is going to make my face look really weird, but I kind of... Yeah. Look. Look. The lighting's going to be strange, but this is just... This is almost required for doing this kind of bullshit. Oh, this is going to be tricky. I just know it. So what we're dealing with here, what we're dealing with here is a felted Angora lace weight sweater. And we need to figure out how to take it apart. Not always, not always easy. In fact, it's frequently fucking impossible, but we are committed. And let's see where it's going to be the other end that it'll start from. Let's do it here. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever actually tried to unravel a sweater before, but trust me on this, it is fucking silly. And I would really only do it when the yarn is especially fine. Or literally just difficult to find, or in otherwise just like, you know, actually buying this much of that type of yarn would cost an arm and a fucking leg. But you know what, we're just gonna we're just gonna get through it any way we can now at this rate. There will be sacrifices, trust me on this. There will absolutely be sacrifices to the gods of yarn because there is no way we're getting all the yarn out of this. Normally, if I wanted to actually deconstruct a sweater, it'll take me about an hour tops. Last time I deconstructed the sleeve of this, not even the entire sleeve, I couldn't quite get the cuff. I deconstructed just the sleeve, and that took me the best part of a week. Because felted Angora is... No, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to say it's the worst thing that you could probably unravel. I can think of probably worse things like, I don't know, yarn made out of human skin. The other t-shirt yarn. But not in this case. Okay, hold on. We got that. There's the. Yeah. So straight away we were running into issues. I do have the correct line here, but because everything felts into it, you end up having to pull the lines apart very slowly. Because do it wrong and you're going to tear the yarn. And we're talking about Angora, which is below lace weight here. Just as an additional fuck you. 
And if you're asking, why am I doing this? Cypher, surely you've got better things to do with your time. Isn't this conceivably some of the, some of the most annoying shit you could be doing? You're absolutely right, it is. In fact, I'm not even zoomed in now because I'm afraid to show you the full actual process of this. It's so hard. And I can't even zoom in that far. Not even kidding. But basically what we are doing here is finding, finding the seam and yanking it out. And this is a single V-stitch seam, which means that the ends are not surged. We can pull it apart successfully and it's not going to, to tear. There we go, a little bit more. And we are very slowly going to open this up. And we're going to do it very carefully because again, we don't want to tear this stuff. We've got to be careful. Super, super, super careful. Super careful. Do this wrong and the whole thing's going to come apart and you're going to find yourself with essentially just a ball of felted, felted mush. And I don't want that. This is Angora. This is pure 100% Angora. And it's known for being as felty as fuck. And not only that, this is old Angora. This is a felted sweater. I'm pretty, basically, you got to see this, the front of this thing. The style is like, it's the, I want to say it's the 80s or the 70s, given form and, you know, walk among us kind of thing. It is old. And I bought it in a thrift store for like nine bucks. But you can see that the seam does come apart slowly. <laughs> did you enjoy the libertarian bear story? Yes, I did. I did. I read the whole thing. Also, hello, Chroma Scott. Yes, I read the whole thing and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And <laughs> not going to lie, I just I felt a little bit bad about it as well because I was just like, I don't know. I'm, I feel bad for laughing. Kind of. Not just a little bit, a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Not as much as I probably should, you know, but just just like a moderate, a moderate amount of bad feeling. I still laughed for the record. I absolutely still laughed. Let let the like let that not be in question. There, I I laughed quite a bit. And come on, don't don't felt on me. Don't felt on me to the point where I can't pull the line out because that would be a pain in the ass. It did improve my day immensely. It absolutely did. This will not improve my day, by the way. This is bullshit. I'm doing some, like, nobody should do it. Don't do what I'm doing, okay? Anyone watching this, don't do this. Do anything else with your time. Do something that won't make you punish yourself. You know, I'm doing this because, you know, you know, mental health issues. But, like, no one should do this. Absolutely no one. I'm constantly making bad decisions. I can't be blamed. I'm just saying. I'm going to have to cut this and then pull the line out and start it again because it's now felt it to the point where I can't yank it any further. And bear in mind, if at any point I get this wrong, I'm going to cut through the line and then I'm going to cut through the actual running threads of this and then we are officially scuppered because that will create a break in the yarn. And if you're asking how I did this for the other sleeve, because that one I actually managed to successfully frog all the way, like I said, it took about a week. Could have done anything else with my time. There's that line out. All right. Now we are getting here slowly, but we will have to pick the threads out kind of carefully. There we go. I think there's a knot there. There is. Now, just in case anyone is wondering about the tools that I use for this. Now, bear in mind, I have been unraveling sweaters for a while. Okay. Frankly, I think if you can learn to unravel sweaters, it is, you know, there, but actually just, there's a hole. Great, the yarn's already torn. Anyway, so if you can learn how to unravel sweaters, right, I can say with, a, with an absolute guarantee that it is the best way of recovering and, like, acquiring rare and unusual yarn for use in your own projects, such that you would probably spend an absolute arm and a leg to get normally. Like, if you don't feel like spending 50, 60, 70 dollars on pure silk or whatever, just essentially just walk into your local thrift store and start looking around for clothes made out of the very the very rare yarn you look for stuff made out of like silk blends nylon blends like cotton's usually pretty good if you can find it like a lot of clothes that you'll find will be 100 percent pure cotton the stuff does not pill up the same way you can get wool as well okay don't get me wrong 
but you will not get, like the wool is always going to be a little bit hit and miss. Like the big problem with wool is that that shit pills like you would not believe. So older wool clothing tends not to, not to work as well. Oh, come on. Where's the, pull out the loops here and I'll see if I can actually get the thread out. Yeah, so older wool clothing tends not to, it tends to pill to the point where you can't really do anything with it. Or it'll be like this and it'll felt, all right? And like, I'm not even kidding. The only reason I'm going anywhere near this particular felted shit show is because it is pure Angora. Like this, this be pure rabbit fur right here. Okay, pure undyed white rabbit fur. If any of you are vegan, I'm still not sorry, but just like, this is not going to apply to you because obviously don't buy Angora if you're, if you're vegan. It comes from rabbits. I'm pretty sure the rabbits are not entirely happy about being sheared like sheep. I don't know, maybe they, maybe they are, like I don't really know, all right? But just, yeah, look, if you're vegan, I'm like, just, yeah, you can't use Angora. Just like, watch the process or click away, I don't know. Just do, do the thing, do whatever makes you happy. What we're talking about here basically is how in the hell am I going to unfelt this sweater to the point where I can just get the sleeve apart and actually start on the yarn without tearing it too badly. By the way, when I did the other sleeve, I lost count of the number of breaks in the yarn. But the nice thing is that like, it's literally so light that you can barely tell there's a break at all because it's like, this stuff is literally finer than lace weight. It's not even half a millimeter wide yarn. It is redonkulous. Now, can I start pulling these lines out of the way? There's a felting that's going on between the lines as well. Interesting thing about this as well, and I'm gonna see if I can actually hold it up and show it to you. What you can see, and it may be a little bit hard to see here, is that like, obviously you can see all the fuzz, of which there is a lot, but you can also see like there's these thick, thicker, whiter hairs. You can kind of see one right here. Those are the guard hairs from the rabbits. <laughs> so you've got this really incredibly soft, downy stuff underneath. And then you've also got these big white, like extra, extra, the, like these guard hairs that basically just stand up a lot. And I guess that's the reason why like, they're just like, you know, pure Angora or whatever, like, come on, pull out. Ah! Don't, don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. Now, if you've ever actually done this before, we have to, we have to split the seam from this end because otherwise it's not going to come apart. You've got to be super careful in yieldy frogging at this point. And I'm kind of lucky in that the, the what they use to, to do the seam together is not Angora, obviously, or else this would be an entire waste of my time. And in fact, we're going to just slice that there to cut that and lift it out a little bit more. This is like surgery, if you're ever curious. Let's pull. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, so the, that broke. Oh well, continue. <laughs> it's gonna take me forever to get to the end of the sleeve at this rate. Like the yarn will actually, the fabric of the yarn itself will actually hold together fairly well as long as you don't tear it too much. It's when it comes time to actually take it apart that that's gonna, that's going to be an issue. I just know it is. Oh God, this is going to take forever. Yeah. So what we're looking for is that V stitch seam. That's what I'm essentially pulling at. And it's actually, oh great, it's actually showing up on camera. That, that seam right here, this seam right here, that sucker is the thing that we need to pull apart. We've got to pull it from the top down because it will unravel from the top down but we need to actually get into it and pull it out. And the Angora has already felt it around it quite a bit, but what I'm using here is the sewing stiletto in order to just pull the threads out real slowly. Now, normally if you're dealing with yarn that isn't quite this felted, it's not a problem at all. You literally just like, you grab the top, you un, you unwind, you, like you basically cut, the t cut it at the top, start pulling, and the seam will just whoop, whip right out and the pieces will come apart and you're done, all right? This is not normal. This is like, 
this is basically raveling on hardcore mode. And then you just, it's, it's so tricky. You end up having to just pull the loops apart real slow. And then grab them from the back. I think will probably be the best way because that, that's a little bit there that felt it if I'm careful. And I've often thought that I should just get like a, a pair of, a pair of hemostats or whatever like that. It's essentially something to just grab the, so I can grab the, just the, the threads that I want because you keep having to just like yank this sucker up. Now, here's the thing. I did actually cut this at the top as in a cut through the fabric and didn't, didn't really think about like how much yarn I was going to sacrifice because in a lot of sweaters, the top of, the top is actually, is actually surged and that means that it's like it's a waste of time I even trust trying to unravel that you end up having to just cut it below the surge point and then just calling it good like there's not a whole lot else you could do with it there we go that looks correct okay no it's not going to pull out bugger it's all right keep pulling the seam real slow so yeah, like the top of the top of the arms on many sweaters is, is surged. And what essentially that means is that like it doesn't have a seam like this that runs up and down. This is actually the, the side seam of the arm. The way that the sweater was worked, and it's not always the case, but in a lot of machine made sweaters it is, it's done like this. The the sweater is done as flat panels, all of it. And then you end up having to you end up having to just seam it, the, like seam it, you know, the, the seam it around like the, you know, down the length of the arm in order to make the, the tube for the arm. And then you seam that, like you put that onto the actual, onto the body and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that like they, they, they to make the arm fit at the angle that they want, they, they don't bother making a piece to the correct angle or whatever like that. That's effort. What they do instead is that they just, they just like cut the fabric across the top, surge it in place, and then you're done. Like they don't do more complex stuff because that would be, that would be nuts. That would take, that would take too long. Let's try pulling this instead. Come on. Come on, I can see the loops. Let's go, motherfucker. Taunting me at this rate. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, so they essentially cut the top. And if you don't know what serge, serger is, um, serger is essentially when they just like, they overlock the top of the, the, the seams to stop it from unraveling. And it's just a, essentially a way of like, steaking except with the machine. So the serger locks the top of the fabric, in this case, the top of a knitted piece of fabric. And, and stops it from ripping. No, it's just it. Whatever way it is, whatever way they make the pieces, the flat panels are just as easy to just seam up the side. So they make them in one piece. And that means that if you're unraveling or trying to reclaim the yarn, this is kind of where you need to start. You need to look for the for the whole pieces, which will be one complete piece of yarn, which is not always the case. Like it's very easy to find like a piece that's a knit, that's essentially just a panel of knit fabric that's been surged everywhere all on all seams. And that essentially makes it pointless to try and unravel because all you're going to be left with is like lots and lots and lots of cut threads. And who has got the time or the patience for that shit? Now, what you want to do is look for the stuff that has the V-seam at the side, something that has a large flat panel that you know is going to be one intact strip. God, this one does not want to move. Like, I knew it was going to be tricky, mind you. Like, and I have to say, if you, do, if you are doing this a lot, the the sewing stiletto okay and i don't know if i've actually had this on the channel before the sewing stiletto this tool that i have this is a bone handled sewing stiletto from i think the late 19th century all right and it was a little rusty when i got it it has now been worn to hell because you can see how much darker this part's gone because I'm constantly, I use it more or less constantly. I didn't expect like 
I didn't expect it to be as useful a tool as it is. And yet it is like essentially my first, like when I'm doing a lot of complex stuff, this is the first thing that I pick up. It is amazingly useful. It has so many different purposes. You can use it for like a lot of things in, in knitting and crochet, especially if you need to do things like on one weave ends or you want to like pick apart stitches or hold things in place for a second. Like I just constantly find myself reaching for it. They are super, super useful. Like it's like a little miniature awl that is just that you can use for all kinds of stuff. And so highly, highly recommend. They're very useful little things. If you can get a vintage one just for the flare. And this actually came in a set. I actually got a, bu a button hook as well with it. Um, so I have a Victorian button hook as well. One that would have been originally been used to actually, you know, do the buttons of your, of your shoes, which I thought was always a little bit like, you know, very kind of funny. <laughs> like what a thing to have to have. But yeah, here you go. Okay, I think we're just going to have to go section by section here to pull out the threads because I don't know how much luck I'm going to have. Like the what problem as well with having the arms here is that the seams tend to felt a lot on the arms. Maybe less so on the actual, on the sides of the sweater, but definitely on the arms themselves. They will, they will felt up like a, like a fucker. Um, I will expect that like if I actually get ever get around to doing the, the main body of the sweater itself, if I ever manage to start working on that as a, as a, an unraveling project, what is probably going to happen is that like, it'll be a much easier one to take apart. Like it'll be a lot less felting overall. All right, we're having a bit of luck, more luck here. It's coming apart, it's just slow. All right, if anyone has any specific questions or whatever about unraveling, feel free to ask me. I've unraveled goddamn near everything at this point and many different types of yarn. So here's what we're at right now. And I'm gonna see if I can actually zoom, zoom in. Is this gonna work? Here we go. All right, there we go. Felt. Felt good ink original. Hello. <laughs> interesting, interesting name. What we're doing here is unraveling a felted Angora lace weight sweater. And what I'm doing is essentially picking apart the seam right now on one of the arms very, very carefully. This particular seam is a V stitch seam. Uh, the top of it is surge, which means that we are going to be sacrificing a certain amount of yarn regardless of whether. Like, you know, regardless of anything else, because I will have to start unraveling below the surged part. But that's fair enough. It's just, it's part of the, it's part of the game. It's part of what you do when you're unraveling a sweater like this. And a lot of machine made sweaters are, are like this. Yeah, this, this seam is not behaving. Come on. For reference, the thing that I'm using is a sewing stiletto, which is like a very small awl, which is used for, essentially it's quite pointy. It's not quite like needle point sharp, but it's still sharp enough to actually get in under stitches and what have you. I'm not actually making anything. This is not making. This is unraveling. Um, this is a vintage Angora lace weight sweater, which is slightly felted. It's probably from the 70s or 80s. And it is pure Angora, which means that it is probably some of the softest, uh, the so like easily some of the softest yarn you could possibly get your hands on. It is like touching a cloud, I'm not even kidding. And I'm going to essentially reclaim the yarn from this because like pure Angora is ridiculously expensive, but I walked into a thrift store and bought this sweater for 10 bucks. So this is a lot, a lot of lace weight Angora. It takes a very long time to reclaim because felted stuff is always very tricky to unravel. A lot of people will say that you literally should not bother because it takes, because it takes too long. <laughs> but I think it's worth the while when the actual, when the, the yarn in question is especially fine. And considering how much good yarn, or at least exotic fibers like that actually costs, this is worth a while. If you're repurposing it for something, yes I am, I will be. <laughs> uh, I am, I am a crochet instructor and fiber artist. So I will eventually, use this in one of my own projects and because this is actually a lace weight angora and it's so light it's like essentially this fabric as is is machine made like i know would be nobody knitted this look how fine that fabric is it's ridiculous like it's absolutely machine made what i will probably be using this for is that like i will pick another another fiber most likely um 
I would say probably some kind of bright color. I'm not even sure what. Like, a, like I say, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe like a bright pink or something like that, you know? Something very kind of like, like it's something that'll show up well against the white. And this will be double stranded with it. And whatever I choose, and probably a, a, like, I think a fine, a fine mercurized cotton or something would probably be okay. The point of the Angora is to give it lots and lots of softness, okay? Angora is just incredibly, it's incredibly soft. If you actually don't know about Angora, this is pure Angora, right? It is just, just the mo the softest thing you can possibly, you could probably possibly wear, you know? And these soft, fuzzy sweaters, like, were very, very popular in, in, like, the mid-century, oh, you know, up to the 70s and 80s kind of a thing. Um, I'm just getting stuff all over the end of this now. This is my, that's my junk where the crap goes, essentially. Yeah, so these sweaters used to be incredibly popular, you know, in the mid-century, in 1950s and everything like that, actually making fuzzy sweaters was like a whole thing. The patterns are just Im amazing, trust me on this. And, like, they did a lot of it, actually, with the advent of acrylic yarn, and acrylic and mohair became a real thing there for a while, because, like, you could make these amazing sweaters, like these amazing fuzzy cashmere sweaters and everything like that, but that would immediately tie you into kind of, like... Essentially having to hand wash your cashmere, you know, and, and that's a pain in the ass. But like the once they actually started to develop machine washable yarns and all the acrylics and everything like that, that just sort of took off in the mid-century in the 1950s and everything. A lot of the patterns now would be specifically for like these new, these new, you know, these new sweaters that you can suddenly make with machine washable yarn. Uh, let's see. Okay. Now we're still working our way down this seam. For reference, the piece that we have here is actually a, is, is part of the arm. My camera is zoomed in so here so that you can actually see what I'm doing. That the, the lace weight and the seams here are just incredibly tiny. There are beads on the other side as well for additional idiocy. And this is the, the line that we've plugged out. I'll just cut that off. So if you do actually get into unraveling, highly recommend it. Good way to recycle yarn, good way to get more raw materials for your own if you do crochet and knit. Um, well worth the while. It's just a way to get it for cheap, essentially. And certainly a way to get different blends that you might be able to reuse for your own stuff uh, that would normally not be available to you if you just actually walked into Michael's or Joanne's or whatever. Uh, one thing that I always like to look for is essentially more interesting cotton and ribbon yarn and I've done incredibly well out of a lot of stuff just bit, like having access to, to some of these to some kind of yarns like that specifically cotton with a nylon wrap around it um, highly recommend if you ever see that cotton and nylon is an incredibly strong blend but if you do a lot of crochet I've done a few bags right now with cotton uh, like essentially cotton and nylon blends and the where the cotton is essentially wrapped with a nylon with a nylon component to give it strength and to stop it from pilling, and they make phenomenal bags. The colors are usually kind of nice, there's a lot of shine to it, it's a lovely texture, especially for crochet. And the, there's a lot of strength, and the fact that it doesn't pill really at all is 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 something else. Like they take a massive amount of wearing because obviously the nylon is incredibly strong. It gives it a lot of strength and durability, which is definitely what you want if you want to start doing bags. And I make a lot of bags. <laughs> now, let's see. One thing I actually might use this yarn for is in, in making shawls. Because this would, like, if you mix it, like, so basically if you took this and then double-stranded it with any kind of, like, decent superwash merino wool or whatever, you would probably make an incredibly soft shawl. It would be just the, it would literally be this, like, the softest thing in the world. And there's the seam coming away. I don't think we're going to be able to pull it directly. No. Yeah. So, just in case, just for, for people here, what we're looking for is... This V-stitch seam, and hopefully you can see it, this V-stitch seam. And we're ripping it from the top down and it should essentially come out. I'll just see if I can lift a stitch and I'll show it to you. Now, if this wasn't felted, the seam, you could just literally pull on the thread and it would come apart. But that's what it looks like there. And we're not going to be able to pull it with this one because it's just, you could pull it but nothing happens. Like it's, it's felted right at the join. And which is not, again, not unusual. 
This is Angora. It's well known to be the feltiest of the felty fuckers, so... See how we get on with this now. Now, the, just for reference, the way that I that I usually rip a seam like this, if I'm very, if you know, if I'm if I'm having issues and if it is felted, you essentially need to take this, the sewing stiletto, and then start pulling it. Essentially, pulling the stitches and then very carefully tearing the fibers that are felted or separating the fibers that are felted. You cannot afford to actually tear the yarn itself, especially when the yarn is this thin. You got to be so careful, and you will see where the fibers have grabbed onto each other. Like that's the thread there that's kind of stuck right now. But if you keep essentially grabbing it and pulling it from all sides, you absolutely can get it to move. And if it doesn't, then you end up generally just cutting it off here. Like and this is, no, this is not gonna come out. So we gotta clip this down and go again. Just so you know, this is my snips. It is uh, sewing snips or whatever. I can't even remember where I got them at this rate. They're really good, really sharp, great for cutting threads, and even they'll even go through fabric if you give it a, if you get a, a little bit of a whammy. It will work. Come on, tear the threads ever so carefully, and then here we go. Now, I'm going to try and actually do this super carefully so you guys can see it. And hopefully I'm not the only person who's actually interested in this. <laughs> okay, but this is like the thing I decided I was going to do today. All right, there's the, the thread. We're just going to pull out the loops. And you can see that every loop will just come apart. As long as you're, as long as you're careful and you can see it. Now, the other issue here is obviously that the running thread is almost the same shade of white as this itself. So eventually we're going to get to the point where we're going to probably tear some threads, but it's okay. Hopefully the only parts we're going to be tearing are the stuff that's really badly felted. Now, the other thing about this, um, and I'm going to actually show you how you unravel something that is this badly felted. You're going to have to trust me that there's a lot, like there's shenanigans involved, all right? This is just, this is just some shit. <laughs> like, this is just some tricky shit, but like, trust me, it's, it's doable. I've done one sleeve already of this. Okay, now I'll pull out a bit more of that. I have done one sleeve already, so there we go. There's that old seam. It is possible. It takes quite a while, and I think the endeavor is worth it, but it is possible. Now, we've almost got to the end of this, so I'm just going to pick. I'm just going to pick it stitch by stitch, because I can't rely on it to actually pull the, the threads individually. I don't think it's going to like just pulling the thread just isn't going to work at this stage. We're just going to have to go stitch by stitch and just work, work through it. This is the slow method. It is, however, the method that works. We're just going to have to pull it. Slow and steady, but it will get through it. I wonder if I actually turn it over, is that going to make it easier to see the stitches on this side? Uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Let's see. Nope, there we go. Like that. The other thing that you can do if it's felted, and I'm not going to do it here because I don't think it's going to make a difference, is that you essentially pull until this doesn't come anymore and then essentially pull the seam apart pull it a bit more pull the seam apart because if it's felted then that will essentially pull the threads that are felted apart and then it'll get, hopefully give you enough play to get in there and actually get working and clear more of this nonsense out but i don't think this is going to apply in this case it's literally so badly felted that we cannot reach any more of the threads it's like you can't pull the threads apart far enough for it to make a difference so you gotta just pull it any way you can through the seams and i, I do realize this is not like the most exciting thing in the world to do it's tricky you know definitely tricky it's just is it gonna come no all right it's still no go there now, the whole point of us actually doing this right is basically for this. This is a clean edge. Clean, 
scroll edge. This is what we want to see. If this had been surged, I'd be crying right about now because you cannot do anything with a surged edge. If it's surged edge, then just fucking forget it. Like there's no, there's no one, no one's got the time to put the yarn back together for the number of times you will have to just essentially put, like you're going to have to essentially have one running thread like per, per line. You'd have to, you'd have to, you know, splice them all back together. And I would not do that unless it was actually something that was impossible to get in any other means. Like, no, if, like, I would actually be able to walk into a shop and buy some kind of Angora yarn if I really wanted some. But, like, it's just... <laughs> Maybe if it was, I don't know, Kiviet or Vicuna or something that's, like, $300 a skein. Maybe then I would take the effort of, like, doing something like that. Pulling it all apart and just, no matter how long or short the threads were, just putting them all back together. And, and then making something out of it, because, like, for a start, you're never going to get any of that stuff. I've seen it in person. Like, I've seen, I've seen Kriviet in person twice. Can confirm it is exactly like, like, it is just like, how do I describe it? It is so unimaginably light and soft. Like, it is like feathers. Like, s the softest, warmest, cuddliest feathers that you've ever had on your body in your entire life. It is truly magical, magical stuff. And I can only imagine the vicuna is even softer and lighter than that, which is just like incredible to think of because like the Krivia was really sort of just absolutely out of this world. Like um, a friend of mine actually has a shrug, uh, like kind of a cowl made of it. And she made it out of a single skein that cost her close to a hundred dollars of a tiny, tiny skein of Krivia done in lace, like done lace with, or, you know, lace weight or whatever. Um, and it is just the most, it is really honestly beautiful. Like it's so, it's so like, so gentle and warm and light. And so there's no way you could overheat. No, can you just, is this? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, here we go. It is truly magical stuff. Like absolutely magical stuff. All right, we're nearly at the end of this now. I'm going to pull the last of the seam out and then we'll actually get to see this, this disaster. Oh God, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're nearly there. You see that the seam is really coming out now. Now, we still have some work to do to actually clean up this, clean up this particular piece, but I'm hoping that'll go a little bit quicker because it gets a lot easier once you don't have to deal with the tube itself. You can actually just flatten it out properly and then see what you've got. Like, I would probably need a little bit more space, unfortunately, to work on. Come on. I would need a little bit more space to actually work on the, 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 the back or whatever of this thing. Uh, just in case you're curious, this is probably cotton, this, this thread here. I could break it just by pulling on it. Um, the the tight weave is basically the thing that's holding it together. Same thing for the actual angora itself or whatever. The fact that it's holding together at all is, is because it's felted quite a lot. Just cut that off. Get rid of that line. Yeah, it's felted into the fabric. So yeah. Now the other option that I may have is that I may not I may deconstruct it, but then not bother actually unraveling the front or the back. I could very easily just like use the panels and try and figure out what else I could do with it. Like say for example, um, cut it, sew it, or steek it, or whatever, and um, and turn it into something like hand warmers or whatever, or just you know nice kind of like cuffs or whatever what have you. Probably not bags. This is not the kind of thing you'd use for bags. Not that I wouldn't be willing to try, but like it's just, it's way too fine. It's too way too delicate. What is going on with that? Let's just cut that off as well. I think these are the final threads, so I may just be able to cut straight through these, but we'll see how we go. No, we're good. There they are. Right. Excellent. I've got a lot of junk to take off this thing now, but you'll see in a minute. Last part we've got is this, which is a, oh no, wait, a <laughs> okay, there we, never mind. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, now I'll zoom out with my camera. Okay, here we go. Now, so this is my spindle. I'm going to use this to actually put the yarn on it to 
later. I would already put this directly onto the yarn, the mechanical yarn spinner, but I'm not going to do it in this case because it just would be just going to occupy like an entire week's worth of nonsense, and I don't feel like doing that. We need to take shit like this off. These are the extra threads that beads were on. Like this is the most extra jumper I've seen in a very long time. I'm not even kidding. It has sequins and beads all over it, as well as being made up out of Angora. Like, I don't know what they were thinking when they made it. I'm kind of, kind of just, just like wondering, like what exactly was going through their minds. Let's take that off. But you can see there's a couple of little kind of threads and everything that the, oh, that this was on. Like I gotta try and cut these off and just kind of accept I'm probably going to slice the yarn as well. But at least that'll be gone. Yeah. Look at that. But this is like it down flat now, so this is a much better kind of idea of what we're dealing with and how much fabric we've actually got to get through. All right, and I've got most of this out now. I think that's, yeah, that's fine. But this is the size of it. It's a big triangular piece and there's the, the cuff down here. The cuff, by the way, is absolutely unfrogable. You cannot do anything with that. I attempted to unravel some of the running threads in the cuff and gave up. It is so, so felted. This is not, nothing's going to happen with this. I'm going to be taking it apart and just saying, fuck that. Essentially, once we get from here to here, I will be stopping. Use that for something else. At the very least, I can use this for stuffing. Oh. If anyone cares, my current cherry flavor is cherry flavor is the flavor, the flavor of the week. Okay, now, oh excuse me, we now need to get rid of all these, all these fucking beads. And there is a method to getting rid of beads. Okay, there is always a method for getting rid of beads if you're deconstructing a sweater. And that method is fucking carefully, but you got to do it from the other side. Now you can't really see them here, all right? Maybe you can just about see the outline, I'm not even sure. But there are all of these tiny little threads that are just kind of sewn into place here. And we're going to have to remove them or cut them and start pulling them up. Like, here's anything. Is that the end? I think that might be the end. No, it's not the end. That's another fucking piece of crap. Take that off. Maybe we've cut the yarn, but who knows in this case. Yeah, so I need to somehow find the end wherever this is. Uh, I think that might be it. Stuff it, yeah, there it is. Cut that thread. And now we get to play the game of let's pull out all of these felted threads so that the sequins on the other side of the fabric fall off. <laughs> And if this seems tedious, it's because it probably is. But that's what you got to do in order to essentially figure out and actually yank these, yank this shit apart. Like, and there's, I can just about see them. It is so fucking hard to see this shit. Like there's, yeah, here's another one. Here's probably, here's another end. Maybe this will give us some play here. Oh, there we go. All right. Like, I've taken beads off a bunch of stuff at this rate and like <laughs> it is it is absolutely not easy. I think that like a lot of beads get sewn in by hand, I think. The ones that are sewn in by hand are very easy to remove. The ones sewn in by machine less so, but this I think was put in by hand. So we just have to cut the threads everywhere. Like I can even see the threads coming out here and they've also felt it into place and you gotta try and fucking yank that out. And this is on the sleeve. Like, that's the thing. It's like, I really kind of question what the fuck they were even doing back in the 70s. Because this was just nothing but questionable choices everywhere. Like, there's that thread. I'm going to cut that, I think. This is literally just like, who decided that sticking this many beads and... Beads and sequins. Why are this many beads and sequins necessary on a fucking sweater? Ah, just... Okay, now you see? You see that? That's a hole. I just cut a hole in the running threads on the actual sweater itself. I'll have to come and fix that somehow when 
I don't unravel down to that part. We're not going to deal with it now because I ain't got time for it right now, but trust me, eventually that'll have to be fixed. It might nearly be faster just to cut the threads entirely, but then you're left with bitty little bits essentially all over the place. And that has its own set of issues. Like if you start missing them, that is also a problem. Yeah, in this case, we might need to just do this from the other side, just because this is so tedious. Um, trying to pull all of these out is going to be difficult, and you won't be able to see it properly from this side. There we go. All right, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this over, and we're going to cut them from this side instead. i got to do this super carefully, because otherwise everything is going to be covered in motherfucking beads. Won't that be fun? All right, so here we are. Ah, now, I've already cut the threads at the back, so some of these are just going to come off anyway. So we'll see what we can do to pull all the threads out. Um, I don't want any to be left. That's the important thing. So one way or another, they got to come off. And we'll have to see how long it takes to actually get them off. All right. Now, normally, I'm not going to be that brave about actually taking these beads off. But, like, like I mean, like, I'm not going to be that, like, I'll be a lot more precious or whatever about actually cutting stuff. But in this case, like, there's not really a whole lot that we can do about not cutting through the Angora. I think, it, like, we could, like, we're just going to have to accept that, like, sacrifices are going to be made. There's going to be a certain amount of just plain fucking shenanigans here. And I won't be able to get everything. Like... There's going to be breaks, there's going to be nastiness, and like normally, I'm I'm pretty good. I can get away with only a couple of breaks, like per project. Like, I think I have definitely done projects where I made no breaks at all, and the only breaks were like the ones that I absolutely had to do in order to, like, to get the thing apart for a start. But not, not in this case. There will be, there will be shenanigans one way or another. We will not be able to do anything about it. And I'm the, my only hope is that I don't have as many breaks as the last time I did this. Because when I did that, it was, it was pretty bad. Because the yarn was so fragile, it just decided it didn't want to, didn't want to frog at all. It just broke. And I can see that all of this is starting to come up now. Which is great. Let's just... Yeah, okay, I think this is going to be a better better solution. We essentially can just like, use the stiletto. And this, by the way, is the big, the big power of having the sewing stiletto. It's the fact that you can just, like, use this to lift up, lift up all the stitches, lift up all these fucking threads, and, and cut them when you need to with the snips. And for what it's worth, I do recover as much as I can. Beads and everything like that, I keep them. Uh, I don't use a whole lot of beads myself. Like, I just don't. It's like not my, it's not my thing. I don't do a whole lot of beading. I find it even more tedious than this. Like, at least I'll do this with, because I know that I'll actually have an intention for all of this bloody yarn. I, there's definitely stuff that I want to use it for and I'm not willing to pay money for <laughs> what it would inevitably cost if I was going to buy it commercially kind of thing. Like, you know, from a regular local yarn store. Um... But doing beading and everything is just, I just don't enjoy it as much. I, I think it's just I, maybe something I need to do more of. I'm not into it really right now. It is not my jam. brings me no joy. And I kind of just have this stuff because I don't like throwing anything out. I hate the idea of getting rid of resources that could conceivably be used in some other fashion. So I generally can tend to keep everything, even stuff that I'm not personally using. Yeah, I think we should just cut the threads as I find them kind of thing. wonder is that a solution? Because I don't want to cut too many of the guard hairs here. I generally have to, to get this stuff off. This was so, this would be so much easier and I'd be started already on the actual unraveling if there weren't any of these bloody beads here. Like, I'm just, just like, it's so fucking fiddly. So fiddly. Why was this a, why was this a choice? And what are these even made of? Holy crap. 
It's hard to tell. I'm not even kidding. Hard to tell. And then you got to try and pick them out of all this bloody Angora. Okay. All right. See, this is what I mean. It's the fact that you're trying to cut them from this side, which is just a pain in the ass. It's like, if you can cut the running, like the actual threads that they're on in the back, then you can literally just put the threads out and they'll all fall off the front and then you're done kind of thing. That's what I did for the other beads that were there. Even the ones that got a little bit caught in the Angora felting, they still came apart, you know, easily enough. You're literally just brushing them off. It's just that in this case, you can barely see the threads from the other side. So... When, you know, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do whatever, we'll see what we can do. I've cut enough of the threads now that I think I just pulled them off with my hands and it's going to be annoying, but hopefully they will come off. Let's do this now. All right, I don't know what everyone else has been doing for the week. All I've been doing really is keeping track of the shit show that is Twitter. And taking care of, like, I've been doing some other videos and everything about crochet, but mostly I've been just kind of essentially screwing around and watching Twitter implode and generally wondering when it is that Musk is going to just call it a day and shutter the whole site at this rate. And then what's going to come up after it? Because there is a, still a need for Twitter. <laughs> like, I don't think the, sh the shutdown of a major social network has, like, really been considered lately. It's like, oh, what happens if Twitter goes away? Don't be silly. Twitter never go away. Well... Musk seems held and bent on making that a reality, so who knows, really. And now I'm wondering if I could just shave all of these off. Would that, would that work? Could I get a razor and just, like, whip all these off at once? That might be fun. Or maybe if I just cut the threads from one side and then the other side and then see if I can just pull it out that way. That might be interesting as well. Cutting all the threads. Let's see, where are we? I actually took all the beads. I have a, a favorite skirt, and the only thing I didn't like about it was the fact that it was covered in beads. And I ended up just like essentially spending a solid two hours doing nothing but removing the beads from it. And now it is absolutely my favorite skirt in the whole world. And I'm going to love it and wear it forever and ever. But that was just like, that was very easy. That was like, they're all, they're literally just a running stitch with beads on it. And all I had to do was turn it inside out. Being really careful, by the way, because there's like a million beads in this thing. And then just literally just tear it, like just work at it until, and pull out all the threads. And then just turn the skirt upside down and shake it and all the beads fall off. <laughs> and I mean, it's just, you know, it's just you do it in sections and everything like that, because they're all like individual running threads and everything. You just got to pick which one you're doing and then yank it out and go on to the next one kind of thing. But still pretty cool, I have to say. Now, let's see how long it takes me to actually get these off. So much rubbish. Oh, okay. Maybe making progress, but it's very slow here. Like, this is just... I literally just do that, and some of them just flip right off because the threads are cut. And some of them don't. You just like eh, scratch at it. And I wonder if I cut it over here on this side, would that would that let me just pull the thread without it break? You know, like would it could I just do that? Uh, yep. And then pull the threads from this side as well. Could that work? Is this a running stitch? It's not, it isn't. Motherfucker. Yeah, okay, so that's not gonna work. You gotta do it the slow way. Because whoever put this sweater together apparently hates me. Oh, no, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. It's gonna come off one way or another. It may take a while, but it'll come off. Like, if nothing else, the stiletto can be really useful at just, like, sort of pulling shit up and then just bonk, cut, move on. And I can just kind of cut them. And I mean, cutting them from the back as well. It's like pulling all of those threads out is going to be tricky as well. But it's, uh, it's also, sort of like, a doable issue. Something that we can do if we want to actually get out the iron. Like big issue that we've got is that there is no you essentially there, you have to kind of look at a piece in the, in the store 
And if it's got essentially beads or any kind of shit like this in it, you have to accept that you're going to be spending a long time taking all of these beads off. Like, it's just a given. The beads got to come off. The, the piece has to be entirely clean or you're essentially just wasting your time and you're never going to be able to get it completely unraveled, especially if it's felted up like this. All these beads, all these fucking threads, everything has got to be removed. And if you have, like, like a, if you say if this machine made and it's got an actual like uh, well, let's say like a, a tag or something sewn into the side then you gotta rip that crap out as well all of it has to go like that you have to be left with nothing but the yarn with no seams it's just a single panel essentially any kind of buttons like this shit no all of it's got to come off and you gotta and the threads attaching it has to come off and bleh so i mean it is what it is like you just have to spend spend a while <laughs> And the thing is, is that each one of these little things that I'm yanking off here, that's not just like one or two. <laughs> it's like two per... Hang on, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. This is like, this was a little bird, whatchamacallit, and I'm just slowly tearing it to pieces. And we take off all of the threads. I'll put that over there. I'll spread it out a bit. And I kind of, I'm going to be kind of pragmatic about like just how many bloody beads and everything there are here. And like... If you're wondering how many bees I actually lose in my house, the answer is too many. But it's okay because we just vacuum them all up. And that's going to pale in comparison to the number that my kids are constantly losing every day. Because my daughter is into the, the old beading. Yeah, these are going to come off, it's fine. I just have to be careful not to actually cut the fabric itself. They like they once these get a little like these aren't like sewn on incredibly tightly. I don't think these generally generally are unless you're doing something very very complex with embroidery. The beads are just kind of put in with the running threads and that's it. You and that's not just because you don't you know because you don't want to secure them. Like obviously you do, but a running thread is usually enough, and anything more than that is going to be a little bit bulky. I think next time I'm definitely going to have a go at a razor and see if a razor will just take them right off instead, like. It may be that it's just not sharp enough. Yeah, I don't know. Like there's a li there's these tiny little there's a little sequin with a little bead on top of it in each of these little things that you see here. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but I certainly do. And you just gotta let's see if we can get this piece all out. And I'll go through on the other side in a second and just slowly pull out all the all the threads. And then the other thing as well is that as I'm unraveling, I can always just take out little, like, extra bits of threads left up behind for this kind of thing. Um, it'll slow you down if you're actually unraveling. I'm certainly going to slow down the process of actually getting this to the point where you can start to unravel, but needs must for something like this, unfortunately. It is just, it is just a bit of a pain in the box. And again, don't ever do this unless it's for something really, truly special. I would never dream of doing this thing, except that it is, it is pure Angora. And, like, this amount of good Angora is just... It's too expensive. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's one piece of it kind of almost cleared. It'll come off. Most of it always will. I think at this point I could probably be a bit more aggressive and just kind of cut it cut the threads in sections and yank them off because they will they will come I just got to be careful with the snips and not cut through the yarn if I cut through the yarn it's not going to be the end of the world but it's just going to be more annoying and it'll be another break that I have to fix later but the yarn is already so fragile that like it's not like will we a notice at that point we'll probably have lost count of the number of breaks at that of that rate It's fine. Oh my god. So I've been doing videos on crochet styles lately, and I've been kind of working on a bunch of stuff to do with uh, preservation or whatever. Um, I've been going through thrift stores and actually picking up a lot of vintage doilies and, and a few other bits and pieces. And I have this plan to make some either decor or Christmas wreaths out of them by essentially taking them and stretching them onto a wreath frame and then adding decorations around them. And I, it, it, I mean, there's a good purpose for doing this as well. I have a big interest in, in vintage crochet anyway, and I want it to be preserved. I want it to like, I know, essentially I want people to, to see it and enjoy the, all these amazing motifs that 
that people would have made in the 1950s and 60s. And a lot of these, like the patterns are long since gone. But the pieces obviously still exist. And if they still exist, then I want them to be on display. I want the people to be able to see them. So I started... Oh, there goes bead. It's fine, I'll get them later. So I got uh, I got my first kind of set today and I got a, a, a wreath frame to actually put the to put them at the them onto and tried it out with just, just some plain purple ribbon today to kind of see what the effect would look like. And I've been quite happy with the outcome so far. It's like I've got a really nice one, which looks it's got a star motif right in the middle of it. And it looks rather Christmassy, you know, considering that it was never designed to actually go onto anything like a, a frame anyway. It was meant to just sit on the table. It's like a doily or whatever. I'm, I'm quite pleased with how it came out. Like, and I can see that whoever made this one was not the best crocheter in the world, I want to say. Like, the there's there, it's not quite lying flat, but it's still a good effort. It's still a good looking, it's a good looking doily. And like, if someone put time, effort, energy into this, um, maybe they were just learning, I don't know. But I think that wherever they are and however they felt about it, it deserves to be seen now and it deserves to have something beautiful made out of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it into art and I'm going to see what I can do to kind of enhance it or make it like more like arty or whatever, something to hang it on the wall. Because I want it to be like, obviously I want it to look, I want it to look nice. I want it to look like it belongs on somebody's wall. Okay, next section. Let's see how we're doing. I'm going to pull this apart. Hopefully I can. And now bear in mind, I've been at this now for, yeah, 53 minutes I have been on stream. And in that time we've undone the seam, like the actual arm seam, and also managed to get started taking all these fucking beads off. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of work involved, don't get me wrong, but I, the effort, in, uh, you know, was really worth it. I'm planning on, at some point on running an unraveling class so that just to teach people how to, like, this is how you reclaim yarn. <laughs> uh, this is what you need to look for. If you're looking for things to unravel or for yarn to reclaim or whatever, like just this is the kind of thing you should you should keep an eye out. And there's there's actually on the crochet subreddit, there's actually um, there's a, a woman who's posted a few times who's um, I think her her heritage is that she's Russian. And she has these amazing stories about like uh, like from family and everything for what they would have done in you know the Soviet era in Russia about like how they would recover yarn from stuff because it wasn't like they wouldn't they weren't able to get like nice expensive yarns because obviously communism so what she would do instead is that they would get like the the sweaters or whatever uh made and or scarves for example made and sent from oh, i don't know turkey or something like that and they would have the expensive the nice expensive yarn in it and then they would just like oh okay so we've got the scarves that's great now we're going to deconstruct the scarf we're going to unravel the whole thing and turn it into, you know, our designer knitwear that we actually want to make, that we can't get because in communist Russia you can't get the yarn. Or, you know, that kind of thing. I just thought it was just like an incredible kind of like, like snapshot into like the, like what you would, you know, needs most. You got to do what you got to do to get the, your, your raw materials kind of thing. But it was just an interesting little piece of history. It's like that was what they did, you know. And it didn't matter to them whether the sides were serge or anything like that, or if they had a piece, or if they had like, you know, clothing and everything from from outside Russia that like had been machine sewed and was serge at the end and it was nothing but bits of yarn. They were like, they didn't care. They just knitted the whole thing the same, you know. And it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing to think like, but they were absolutely willing to do it because like they couldn't get raw materials otherwise. It's like they were absolutely okay with using whatever the hell they could get their hands on. They made do and they, you know, created patterns and 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 pieces and whatever they felt like just using yarn like that all right this is all coming up now that's good i think once i actually clip most of this off i can just sweep it into the bowl as opposed to just picking it off let's see is that all off it's not um do, do, last few in this bit I can actually cut through the sequins with this most likely, but I don't know if I really want to. Okay. Let's put this in here. And I've already lost a few, but it's fine. Here we go. Scoop all them down. Yep. 
to this. Oh, we, and I've got a lap full of sequins, apparently. Good job. I'll just... Give me a second. I'm just going to slowly transfer all of them to the bowl. Very slowly. I will be finding sequins all over my desk for the next week. It'll be just the best, I know it. That or underneath my desk. That's also a possibility. Where did they come from? I thought I kept them all in there. Like, did you just fly? Wait, okay, here we go. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Back to this. Slowly, slowly, slowly tearing this apart. I think they are. It's like I pull at this here and they just kind of fly all over the place and then that's where they end up going sideways on me. Yeah, because I've cut a bunch of the threads here, so... Alright. I'm totally just going to just cut through the sequence. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'll follow you. No more of this nonsense. Oh, so okay, so random thing. I went to see a comedy show last night by a bunch of uh, Irish comedians by the name of Foil Arms and Hog. And I found them to be incredibly funny. Just these these guys from from Ireland, a bunch of comedians. They actually go on YouTube or whatever. Highly recommend if you decide that you want to actually watch something super bloody funny. Cannot guarantee that the jokes will all make sense if you're not Irish, okay? But... Personally, being Irish, I found them to be bloody hilarious, and I was like, "That's that's some good, that's some good comedy." And there was a surprising lack of cursing. Uh, just they, you know, they, they're they're kind of good. They make it they're they're more witty than they are vulgar. You know, they don't do a whole lot of actual swearing, which I thought really appreciated because you know, I do enough swearing for everybody. Let's be clear. All right, we can you know we can totally do this. It'll be fine. We're gonna okay. Let's do this. Slowly, slowly, slowly taking off all these bloody beads and then we can actually get to the top and actually start working this down. Unraveling and gory yarn from the 70s or 80s, if I had to guess. And slowly chopping off all these fucking buttons and beads and sequins. And all I can think is that this, the 80s and the 70s were a wild time. A wild time for everybody, I'm gonna say. Just, just absolutely, in, absolute insanity, apparently, from by all accounts. And actually, interesting enough, if you're into your old history, okay, uh, I highly recommend watching The Big Short if you've ever seen it. Um, it's about the 2000, 2008 recession. But I've been watching a lot of uh, historical financial videos on things like. Uh, the Wall Street crash, the good, like the great, and the, the start of the Great Depression in in nineteen twenty nine, because as everybody knows, I have a big fondness for history, and I'm a, a real enthusiast of of learning. Like you know, just essentially just watching random videos that people find incredibly dry about various aspects of different like major historical events, and I've been on a real kick involving like involving like finance stuff lately. So make of that what you will. That's almost as bad in Australian who doesn't swear. <laughs> no, I look, 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 I'm Irish. I absolutely swear for, you know, for everybody. Just, uh, <laughs> but yeah, look, Foil Arms and Hog, highly recommend. They are incredibly funny. They do a certain amount of swearing and there was some swearing last night, but not as much swearing as you might think, you know, and they were, they were mostly just like incredibly funny. And I, I and, you know, I like that. Anyway. If you want to actually learn stuff about financial, like, uh, major events, that's the things about the Great Recession, and blah, 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 and I'm not sure if anyone but me is interested in that kind of stuff, but I am super interested in all that thing, and history in general, and not only, like, vintage crochet, uh, although vintage crochet, I'd say, is probably the thing that I am most into, but I am very much into, like, like, Historical perspectives that don't get generally get a lot of airtime because they're just so boring. <laughs> I, I don't know. I find them really fascinating. Like, there's a guy on, another actually Irish guy on YouTube called Patrick Boyle, and he is a finance guy. And he does these incredibly interesting videos 
uh, on major financial events, financial, like just the things like what, what was the first, like he has an entire video on the Ponzi scheme, like where that came from, like how it, how it actually developed and what this, this guy, the, the, the guy himself, Charles Ponzi, like his, where he got the idea from and all this kind of stuff. I was watching that and thought it was fascinating. Like everyone wants to know the origin of like shit, like MLMs and all this kind of thing. Like where they kind of originated from? Well, the proto scheme was the Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and that's where it came from, from that guy, early 20th century, which is incredible when you think about it. Uh, there's that fucking hole I made earlier. Oh, look at that. Just realized it was hidden by the yarn. <laughs> uh, okay, it's okay. Well, there goes another bead. I'm going to be, I swear I'm going to be finding them. Ponzi scheme probably came from here in Utah. Um, no, actually it was, apparently it was Boston. According to the video, Charles Ponzi was based in Boston. He was originally Italian, all right? And I don't know what that says about Italians. Probably nothing. <laughs> and he went all the way around the US doing various things and uh, eventually settled on this idea that he had, a, he had a, an idea which was essentially international arbitrage using like things like postage stamps of all things, which was interesting, I thought, on its face. But then he got this idea of like, essentially promising people all these returns that he could make, which was nonsense because like it was literally impossible for him to make those returns. So he just started, kept using the money that people were giving him to pay off the people who had already paid in. And thus it became a Ponzi scheme. And that's the name of it now forevermore, a Ponzi scheme, which is, you know, phenomenal. It's like, well, there you go. Like it was called robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like that was the actual, that was his name of that type of thing. It wasn't the, he wasn't the first one to come up with it. Just like he was the one that kind of made it, made it famous kind of whatever. And it all went down in the span of about six months, which was also really interesting. But I like, see, I was looking at that, right? And I was also watching this video on the 1987 crash right? And that one I think is far more interesting from an actual like, well, he, you know, from a, a, I guess, um, like financial history, because it's closer to us and it's kind of a little bit more relatable, I guess. But there's just this, 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 like watching it is just like, you can just sense the hubris from white tech bros. And if anyone here is a white tech pro, I'm really sorry, but that's totally what it was. It was like, just these, these guys who just like have all of these essentially like what are they called financial derivatives which are utterly disconnected from anything resembling reality or what the underlying assets are actually doing or made of or whatever it's just it's nonsense you know and they just let that get away from them and just and and everything failed everything failed in the place of about about a week and then on the morning the, the stock exchanges just couldn't trade fast enough and then the prices all updated wrong and like and people didn't realize where they had, where you know that they'd suddenly sold everything way too cheap, and now they couldn't cover their bets and everything like that, and it just all kind of went utterly demented out of nowhere. But it's all magical fake money. It's just demented, like you know, money that doesn't exist anywhere. Bets made on stuff that doesn't exist anywhere. It's the financial markets are confusing, and I say that as someone who used to work in fintech, in this financial tech, if, any, if you don't know about that. I used to work in that. I used to work as a senior developer and I am still under NDA and probably will be for a while about a lot of it. So I will not be divulging names. That would be unfair and also might get me in legal trouble. But uh, I was working on things like cryptocurrency and like wealth management and a few other things. And it's, you know, it's a crazy thing. Yes, I did that, you know, but oh, it was all just, it was nonsense. All of it, and I, and I built those systems. It was all just stuff I could have changed with the flick of a button, you know? Nothing, nothing is, is relevant, nothing is real. It's all just spit and bubble gum. The only thing that's real is stuff in front of you. Stuff like this, frogging a sweater. <laughs> I stick to Moonies, not overly adventurous. No, no, you're absolutely right, don't. Don't, don't be adventurous when it comes to, to stock. It's all just, it's all just wishful thinking. None of it makes sense. But anyway, so I, I was really watching a lot of this now, okay, because I don't know if anyone else has been following that stuff to do with FTX this week. I hope it's not just me. I hope it's not just me. Like Twitter and FTX has been like, I'm just, all I'm doing is sitting around with the fucking popcorn with those, all right? And sorry about getting into tech and everything again. Like I don't normally talk this much about tech. It's just that I've been watching this 
for a solid week <laughs> while I'm while crocheting, while doing my crafting or doing stuff like this, all right, I kid you not, I've just been throwing on videos and browsing Twitter and Reddit and everything like that, just looking for for info about what the latest nonsense has gone down with Twitter and FTX just folding. And every time I'm looking at going like the just oh dear god, white white tech bros who think that they know everything, I cannot even. But anyway, yeah. If so for, for those of you who are not aware of the story, right? And FTX is incredibly just it's wild, absolutely wild. Um yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. Hang on. I'm not sure FTX could have fallen hard or almost as bad as Enron. Oh God, I like, I think it's worse than Enron. Like, I'm not even kidding. I think it's worse than Enron. Like, Enron at least had actual real world assets somewhere. FTX doesn't. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's worse than that. Okay. So look, FTX, right? This exchange, it's an FTX exchange. It's a cryptocurrency exchange, right? They allow people to, you know, buy, sell, trade, store their cryptocurrency, trade it, and all this other kind of shenanigans. Long story short, FTX, the exchange, was connected to a hedge fund set up by the same guy who actually owned the exchange, right? Called Sam... Sam something something double barrel name, and I'm terrible with names. That guy, all right? And he was just... You should have seen him. He looked like Shia LaBeouf with a worse haircut. It was just... And he just, no, it's not Sam, I'm not in a serial color, although I wouldn't put it past him, like, I'm not even, I don't know, you know, don't know the guy, right? He's a, he's a 30-something, like, tech billionaire or whatever in Silicon Valley, for all I know, he is a serial color, I don't know, suppose, guys. But yeah, no, this guy, is like, he set up this hedge fund, right, to, and made all of these crazy aspects, and he essentially got the, the exchange to, to lend money to the hedge fund and the hedge fund started making these insane bets with it on all these different cryptocurrencies now if anyone has been following cryptocurrency over the last ooh, i don't know a month or so it has been crashing across the board super fucking hard okay like super hard everything to do with cryptocurrency has been a major funk for about i think i want to say at least a month if not longer right and effectively alameda was just just essentially but the crash happening as fast as it did alameda was just insolvent like they they had they could not cover their customer the, the exchange could not cover their customers' positions essentially. So when people started pulling their money back out of the exchange, the exchange couldn't give them back their money because the money was already tied up with the hedge fund, and the hedge fund couldn't give it back fast enough, or didn't have it at all. Okay, they're talking billions of dollars in, and I want to be clear: billions of dollars in imaginary math books, none of which is actually real. Literally none of it's real. It's all just fucking numbers, okay? It totally is just numbers. It's meaningless twaddle. There is nothing going on there. Like, the only reason any of it has a value is because we have decided that it is a value. It is even worse than fiat currency. Like, I am a major anti-cryptocurrency person. I think cryptocurrency is a fucking stupid idea on its face. It solves no problems whatsoever. It does nothing but cause problems, frankly, and the environmental cost is just god awful and it is literally like mlms but for white male idiots in their 30s who think they know more than everybody else i'm and yes and this is actually and i've worked on cryptocurrency systems i for the record i was being paid very very highly to do it and the the effort of actually working on all of those systems eventually burnt me out and gave me a nervous breakdown so i think i paid my dues in that respect anyway FTC, long story short, has gone, Alameda's gone bankrupt, the hedge fund's gone bankrupt, okay? Hedge fund's gone bankrupt, entirely bankrupt. Like, and not only has it gone bankrupt, but the, the now the exchange is bankrupt. And as far as I can tell, this guy, this founder, cashed out about a billion dollars of assets and fucked off to the Bahamas. And that's interesting to me. It really is. It, it it's, it's like... Like, he just, he just, like, he just, there's no recourse here. That's basically it. There's essentially no recourse. Yeah, like, your money's gone, okay? Sorry. I'm, I'm, you know, you put all your money in that, like, you put your man, you're putting your money into imaginary math books. You might as well spend it on Beanie Babies. There was no value there. The, the value is entirely in your head. And unless you can find a greater fool to sell that shit to, no, sorry. <laughs> you're, 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 you're done, you're, you're done, you're out. Um... Sorry, you don't have any more money. Should have, you know, bought something real and tangible. Even Beanie Babies actually might you might be able to get a few bucks for it. You can't get anything for cryptocurrency. 
That's true of American currency as well as fiat currency. For the... <laughs> I, I mean, so the, the, the thing about the dollar and, you know, the Canadian dollar and all these other fiat currencies is that they, by and large, they actually do their job at what they're, they're not there to hold value. They're there to facilitate the trade, trade and economy. And, you know, there's, there's a vested interest in keeping them available to do that kind of thing. By and large, Bitcoin can't do that. It's literally like trading stocks, except more volatile, unregulated stocks. And if you make the wrong call, you will lose your money. And you are absolutely shit out of luck if someone scams you. You have no recourse. All of the regulation that the banks have spent, that essentially the global banking system has spent about close to 200 years putting into place to make things fair and to give people enough confidence to actually do things like trade stocks, all of that doesn't apply when you're dealing with cryptocurrencies. You know, you might as well just waste your... Like, that's... I <laughs> truly believe it's a terrible idea. But, yeah. But anyway, all I've been doing is just watching all of this crazy-ass nonsense to do with FTC. Now, I've just looked... I'm losing viewers now. I was up to five viewers, now I'm down to three. Some people don't like me talking about cryptocurrency and how much I hate it. <laughs> don't care. Yeah. But anyway, all I've been doing is just watching FT, FTX, okay? And wondering when it is they're just going to catch up with this guy and arrest him. Because I don't actually know if the Bahamas can extradite, or if they would even. Like, there must have been a reason that he fucked off to the Bahamas. <laughs> Presumably there was, like he's just, you know, private jet or whatever like that, just, you know, decides to leave the US just when, you know, his hedge fund is collapsed and has lost like billions of dollars. <laughs> and, it's, you know, I used to suffer from quite a lot of imposter syndrome in my job, all right? And I was a senior full stack web dev, very, very highly skilled, all right? I was able to, I was, could code, I could sling code with the best of them. I could design systems all day, every day. I designed and built entire cryptocurrency systems myself, built them alone because that was what was required of me, maintained them alone because that was what was required of me. And like, I just, I can't believe this. I honestly can't believe this. FTX is just like, I, I, the thing is, that despite the fact that I did all of that, I still had major imposter syndrome about it. I kind of thought, you know, oh, I'm not that good. But I was doing a lot of really, you know, impressively difficult stuff, okay? But I got to, looking back now, I'm just like, I'm never going to feel like, I'm never going to feel it again. Because this guy, this guy, all right, was apparently, when he pitched to the investors saying that like, oh yeah, I want you to give me billions of dollars for this fucking half-assed idea of God running this exchange thing and a hedge fund and blah, 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 blah. And he was playing League of Legends while he was on the call with the investors and they still gave him the millions, of, millions of dollars. I'm like... If that does not beat everything, like, and it wasn't like just this, I cannot believe they still gave him money knowing that, that like he was playing a video game while on the call trying to convince investors, serious investors, by the way, to give him millions of dollars. Meme stocks was apparently a thing in this case. And Jesus, that's a whole ass thing. Anyway. That's FTX. I am reveling in the in the discomfort of of everything to do with FTX because it's like, oh look, another cryptocurrency thing turns out to be a massive scam and all your money's gone. And it's like, why do we hear about this so often? Why is this happening every other week? I wonder what this does to confidence in the cryptocurrency market. Do you think maybe that's the reason that all cryptocurrencies have been taking a nosedive lately? People just literally don't trust it to be, you know fair, equitable, or even, you know, viable as an investment strategy. The answer to all of the above is no. Uh, yeah. But Twitter is the other thing that I keep watching. And like, and I gotta say, I'm losing faith that Twitter is even going to be around by Christmas at this rate. It's like, Musk has gone on, a, on the thing of just essentially firing everybody, even the people he absolutely needs to keep the servers running. And I don't know what to think about that. I'm like, is he actually trying to shut down Twitter? Like, could he? I don't know. I'm pretty sure that their assets are fairly significant. At what point does the company get devalued to, the, to, to where they cannot recover? And then that's it, they're bankrupt. Or, or I don't know. I don't know if Twitter will go bankrupt, but I kind of want Musk to go bankrupt because I'm still, I want to have a party. A friend of mine we promised ourselves that we are totally, the day Musk goes bankrupt, we are going to organize a massive party. It's going to be great. 
I really, really want Twister to die a horrible, gruesome death. Gruesome, too much food. No, 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 seriously. Like, I don't know if I wanted to die a death, but I definitely want Musk to to take a beating over it, you know? Because I know a lot of people who have found great community and have built a lot of, like, important friendships and everything on Twitter and far be it for me to take that away from them, which Musk seems hell-bent on doing, for the record. But but also, Twitter is also a hive of common villainy. <laughs> Like, I've been viral on it a few times. I do have a Twitter account. I have something like 7,000 followers or whatever. And I went viral for a bunch of shit that I said um, during, oh, Trump's campaign in 2000. During the pandemic or something, I can't even remember. That was interesting. I've been viral a few times, but that one was the, the biggest, I think. And it's just, just very strange. <laughs> but, but even so, like, well... There is, I think, a need for up to the minute kind of essentially boots on the ground reporting. And and Twitter fills that niche incredibly well. But I'm not sure if there's something that could be it does it need to be filled that niche need to be filled like Twitter. Could it just be filled by something else? Trump tainted it too much for me not to shun it. No, you I mean you're absolutely right. I mean the it was although in fairness it was like the <laughs> it was such a happy day when he finally got booted off. And I'm pretty sure Jack Dorsey was involved with that one. He was such, such a fucking tool. Cannot, well, I mean, he still was, he still is. He's just like, he's on, what the fuck is it called? Parlor or something. I can't even remember right now. Parlor? Is that still a thing? I thought their service got such, shut down. I can't remember. You know what? We're talking about, I should just change the, the name of the scheme. So like, we're, di- we're taking beads on, over, we're taking beans off a sweater and eventually unraveling this piece of shit. And then, and then we're also talking about how Trump is like a ferret wearing potato in need of in need of therapy, possibly some electroshock therapy, like that, you know, that kind of thing. But I t- okay, there we go. Okay, listen, look, it's they're all gone. All the beads are gone. Okay, there's a sequin there, but we're not going to talk about that one. And there's a bead. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, I'm going to pull out a second. Can I? There we go. Okay, so here's our piece. Okay. This is like the, 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 we're kind of going to be as probably as close as we're going to get until I properly start to frog it and take out all those last little, like these last little threads and stuff. Like that's tied in. I'm going to have to just clip it off. And there's fluff everywhere. I will have, you know, it's all over me. I don't think you can see it, but I'm going to have to go over myself with like a lint remover after this because I'm just... And my entire desk is going to be covered in, in fluff. And so this is the result of this. Here you go. <laughs> All of that crap. I'm probably just going to dump it. I don't know if I can even recover the, 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 the beads and everything out of the... I might be able to recover the sequins and maybe some of the beads, but there's so much fluff in there, I don't think I'm going to be able to. How are you going to frog such felting? Ah, ah, watch and learn, dear Padawan. But the first thing we've got to do is actually prep this, the edge to start to start the the process and this is a bit this is going to be a bit uh, this is going to be a bit of a thing okay now bear in mind this is angora it is heavily felted this is a sweater from about the 1970s 1980s this is the sleeve okay i have done the other sleeve i have actually managed to 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 go through it and i'm going to go through it in like it takes quite a while but the first thing we got to do is actually prep the edge because at the moment this is literally just felted fabric this edge is just like there is no there's no starting point because this was surged at the top okay and I need to get down to the correct essentially running thread which could be oh let's see let's see where are we at we're gonna have to start pulling the threads out and figure out where the last one is all right And you need to do this kind of without, yeah, okay, here we go. So there's one, there's one break. Now, let's go down to this running thread. Now, for the record, when you're actually frogging it, this is essentially what you have to do for almost every frog, for almost every thread. This is basically what you have to do, but you especially have to do it up at the start because you need to find out essentially where the, Let's see where 
a decent edge is. You've got to find one consistent running thread, an unbroken running thread, because the moment is not broken. It's, it's going to be broken at the top. You've got to find the, 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 the last unbroken running thread so you can actually start unraveling. And that means I'm going to have to start pulling it out here. Like, that's looking good, but probably not. It's never that easy. Let's see. Now, if you think that this takes a while, you would be absolutely right. But this is essentially what you have to do. Now, this is the most extreme example you were probably ever going to see, by the way. Like, I'm pretty sure you're never going to see anyone try to frog a sweater this badly felted. <laughs> Just no one but me is going to do this stuff. It's like, no, no, no one else is this insane. Um, it just, it's just not, not a thing. Put that over there. All right, so let's see. Pull these out. But this is just kind of the thing that you have to do if something is that badly felted. Now, the thing is, is that this is a good technique to learn, if only because, like, you can figure, like, for actual, for other sweaters that are maybe not as badly felted as this, it's a good technique to know because then if something is felted, like, under the arms and everything, being aware of how to pull this stuff out is, is useful, all right? And you can see that I'm kind of very slowly pulling the running threads here, okay? And I got to get down to like the last good running thread. So we're going to just pull them out slowly here and here. And sort of unfelting it stitch by stitch as you go across. Now that's, yeah, see, that's not a good running thread. That one might be. Now, I'm going to, so I'm going to show you this, all right? And actually, I'm going to zoom in with the old, yeah, there we go. Now, when I'm actually going to frog this properly, all right, most of the time this is what I'm going to be doing. Super, super slowly. <laughs> this is why it took me a week last time when I was doing this. It's like every stitch practically needs to be, you need to pull the whole thing super carefully, super slowly, trying not to break the yarn because that's a piece, that's the piece of yarn that we want, all right? This Thin, thin, thin lace weight angora. That's what we want. And like, and when I actually got a whole bunch of this, I could literally hold it up like that and let it, like I'd hold it up like that and let it go and it would just float, it would just float down. It was like literally light as a feather. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna continue pulling out these threads. Find the last good, the last good thread. And you can see there's gonna be all these little bits. And that's from the ones that are already broken. And I gotta try and get under all of them and pull them all out. Yeah, that's gone. And yeah, eventually we'll get down to the the actual whole running threads. Pull, pull, pull. There's that. So this well, this little edge here. You can see all the stitches are intact, and this is how I know it's good. And this is how I know that this is going to be good to good to frog. But we got to get, sort of try and find the running threads now. Like I can see, no, I can see there's, there's, that's gone. That running thread doesn't work. So we got to go down to the one beneath it. And as you pull out more of them, it does get easier. So I can see I've got this, this running thread. Gently pull, gently pull past all of this gone off of felting. And this, by the way, is where, like, where the, the sewing stiletto is an absolute godsend. And this is not to say that you can't just like, I. the point of this, by the way, is not very sharp. You can see I can do that and not really, it's pointy, but it's not like gonna hurt me. Not, I'm not gonna dig it into my finger or anything. Like it's not like a needle, but it is like unbelievably easy to just like grab in there, pull, and just essentially pull and the yarn just, the yarn just tears instantly. Because this stuff is so, so, so light. Um, that's why I kind of have to be so fucking gentle with it. And like I said, I did this the first time. I did it on the other sleeve. And I did get like essentially a single a single skein of lace weight and gore out of it. And I think it was certainly worth the effort, okay? But like there's so many breaks in it that like it's just... <laughs> 
Like you just you and you absolutely stop counting after a while. It's just there's no point. All right, let's pull this up again. I hope you guys can see me kind of pulling this out now. This is such delicate work. And I will let you guys be the judge of whether it's actually worth the effort. Carefully, carefully. Oh, that's bad running thread again. Oh, now see there, I just pulled that and that just tore. Like, <laughs> just like that. Just like that. All gone. Now, that's actually a piece of the surged edge that I didn't cut off. And the top of that is definitely gone. I'll just have to cut that up with the clippers, but it's it's fine. All right. Still working on this. Still working down to the, the good, last good running thread. I will bring this probably along next week as well. I'll show you guys the amount of the amount of progress that I've got on it at least. And we'll see. And we'll see how much more I can get done. Like I think it's 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 you, you gotta just it's good to essentially just to see the the process if nothing else of like of how like how just really trying to get essentially trying to trying to get this technique to work and pull out all of the threads and actually get decent yarn out of the other side and the first time that I actually did this I wound everything onto I found everything onto my mechanical winder, but then I didn't have the use of my mechanical winder for a solid week because it took so long to do it. So I'm going to just use a spindle instead this time. Like the actual, I was expecting, so not expecting the skein that I got out of it to be larger, but no, this is so thinner than lace weight. It is absolutely not, <laughs> like it's not going to be that, it's not going to be that, that thick. And I may even have a go with my spinning wheel. Because I've got a spinning wheel now. And that's going to be interesting. Because someday I may actually spin on stream. Who knows. But if I do, I may actually have a go with spinning this and another fibre into each other. And we'll see what kind of results we get. And, like, the really interesting thing about having a spinning wheel now is that if you wanted to, you could actually just start throwing little bits of this stuff into it. Just kind of give something a little bit of flavour. Like, if you drafted a whole bunch of like merino or whatever like that and you decide you're just going to throw some angora into it to give it some softness i mean yes you could actually do that it might be interesting okay so i'm going to cut the top of this off and let's see how we go now there. like i can't cut through the the surge like the surge stuff with the with the with the, the, the with this like with the the sewing stiletto i just can't it's not oh, there's a thread i'm gonna try and pull that out it's not it's not sharp enough for that and also it could damage the yarn even more than i'm already damaging it all right let's see where we are I'm sure some people would consider me kind of mad for doing this, but I think it's actually the worth. Like I think, it's it's worthwhile, and there's something oddly satisfying about it, for what it's worth. Like you know, I'm not. Sh and again, I'm not sure if anybody shares my sentiment in that respect. I personally really like it. This corner is always going to be tricky because this edge is always the worst. It is the the most felted piece you're actually almost at the point of it just being like literally felt and nothing else but if you're careful you can pull the pull the stiletto in and grab the threads out all right doesn't look like a whole lot in fairness but like this is kind of what you'd expect if for something that is just this badly felted this is really what you have to do in order to prep just to get started on on really kind of on really kind of digging in and unraveling it and there you go it just comes apart <laughs> there goes a piece of thread for a piece of the yarn and i just want to reassure everybody i'm not going to waste any part of this don't worry 
all of it will be saved even the pieces that I can't actually frog because they're too badly felted all of them are going to be used in some way even if that means that I use a stuffing or polyfill or something or other whenever I whenever I decide to make a magurumi again I mean I absolutely will I'll do all kinds of stuff like that I do not like to waste anything at all any raw materials I can get my hands on even stuff that I probably shouldn't bother with all right so that piece we're just going to yeah which to be honest it doesn't look like a whole lot but we are actually getting down to a cleaner edge here which is what we want now I may need to pull out one or two additional running threads but they will come out and the the sewing stiletto is really good for this kind of thing here we go I've gotten that bit out at least um, the 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 thing is is that the, the the yarn is surprisingly resilient as long as you are gentle with it and if you don't yank it too hard and and then just kind of target which areas to pull for the felting like I can just pull this little bit now most likely and it will come out so let's see yeah oh so that's there's a piece of cotton thread stuck there from when from the beads so got it there and now we are going to clip it really really carefully yep. yeah got it all right now this is yeah this is like super delicate kind of like yarn surgery whatever you want to call it there we go we'll pull that out yarn surgery i think that's what it is because you want to get back to the point of like getting back to the last known good running through get rid of that now let's see what are these that's a piece that we can just get rid of i think Once again, don't don't do this. <laughs> don't do this if you value your sanity. This is for people who are not allergic to angora or rabbits or whatever, and who also don't. Well, hang on, I'm going to see you now. <coughs> oh, she says while mentioning allergies, I'm not allergic to rabbit. This angora, if you're allergic to rabbit, don't go near it. Let let you let you be warned. Being allergic to rabbits means you're going to be probably you're not going to be want to be around Angora. It's not good for you. Okay, so this thread can come out. I think there we go. Pull off that running thread. There's that. Okay, yeah. So we're definitely getting back to a clean running thread here. Let's see if I probably just lift out this one. That will come out as well. There we go. That's caught. Cut the felt. Pull it, no. Caught. Then I'm going to cut the felt again. So careful. Because, it, like, if you stretch it out, it will actually come apart on its own. You just need to give it a chance to come. There we go. Thank you, Quaid. <laughs> You can see the bit bits are getting grabbed. That's the felted parts that you gotta kind of be gentle with and then pull it really carefully. I know if it seems like I'm not very chatty right now, but oh, this is incredibly tricky and it takes quite a bit of effort and concentration. And I will say this much, like I do I do find it quite relaxing just as a general kind of operation and by the way there's we still have the entire rest of like the edge here so this is just going to take a while to get a clean edge um, so it is I've now been online for an hour and 40 minutes and we're still not at, even at the point of actually getting to being able to unravel the sweater <laughs> yes to actually start like reclaiming the yarn it's not we're not there yet it's just no we we ain't got we ain't got it yet 
we've got to continue we've got to continue we've got more prep to do to get to the point of being able to just gonna keep that up there to get the, to the point of being able to actually start unraveling and this is really just like a this is definitely a like a this is a felted very felted sweater issue this is not something you should normally see if you're doing like a, a regular sweater that has like regular fiber like not crazy felted fiber so if anyone actually is curious all right if you're actually in a thrift store and you want to look around for something to to to, to frog something they, to unravel or to, to recycle yarn from start looking for look for look for cotton look for nylon generally avoid acrylic mostly because it just i mean it's going to be cheap but also it's but it's going to be cheap you know i think you should you know i think you should aim higher than that get acrylic only if you particularly like it i would personally rather go for things like nylon like I don't want to say anybody. I don't want to see anybody kind of rag or whatever on nylon for being a synthetic fiber. I personally think it's one of the better synthetic fibers out there. Uh, I think it's well worth it's well worth kind of indulging in and looking for, especially because it has it it, it lends so much strength to things like cotton. It's a bit like the nylon mixed with other stuff can produce some really wonderful yarn. So I definitely think it's a lot, like, it, it, I don't, it's definitely one of those ones that I'm like, I think it's underrated. I think people should give it a chance. Okay. All right. So we're getting, we're getting to the point now where we're actually getting, like, I've got two threads coming out of here, but I'm going to get back to that. Like, but that's a good enough. We can run on to the next part and see where we're at. All right. Let's see. Where are we here? Are you coming out? You are. There we go. And that's just a random loop. Okay. All right. So we're still working. We still have a running thread and I just split it because I ran through the loops. And there's the breaks. Let's continue. Let's continue. We'll stretch this out. We'll see if we can keep an eye on it. I'm sure that I'm going to come across a break and that thread's going to go away, but it'll be fine. Yep, there's one. Let's get rid of that. Yes. Pull out that thread. Okay. Let's do this. Yeah, so look for look for cotton if you can. Cotton on its own is generally pretty hard wearing. It doesn't pill the same way that wool does. It does wear and pill a little bit, but not nearly as badly as wool. It doesn't felt the same way as well. 100% uh, cotton is definitely interesting stuff. Uh, like, I would use a lot of that just for making bags. If I get it in good condition, I find that it doesn't... Like, it wears a little bit too much sometimes. And I will find, like, cotton sweaters or whatever like that that I'm sure are really nice, but, like, they literally are too worn to even frog. Because the when it wears, it just becomes impossible to pull it apart. It, not because it felt, just because it kind of flattens and squashes itself. And it's not, I don't want to say it's quite like felting, because the fibres don't really kind of mash themselves together or whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it becomes it, it becomes tricky to work with. And I personally, I'm not into it. I'm not a fan of it. So, like, new cotton is good. And I just, but I've seen a lot of people go into, like, they go into the, into... I'm on a member of the Unravelers um, subreddit, if you know it. Highly recommend. Get a lot of good advice there for actually getting into doing this kind of this kind of yarn recycling. I sometimes see new people there just kind of going and picking, like, oh, I just found some really nice like cashmere or whatever like that, and uh, this is going to be great and blah blah blah, and then they realize that it's going to be an absolute fucking nightmare to unravel if they can even find like where to unravel it to begin with because it's something like this it's just very badly felted or it's like in terrible condition or they just cannot find the seams or the seams are wrong like you don't always see the v-stitch seam like a non-surge seam is generally what you're looking for but i think most people just look for the v-stitch and call it good um oh god look at this <laughs> let me pull it out But like, there is a, a couple of different non-surge seams that you can actually work with. 
Like, not many, mind you, but the surge, the surge team is the only really no-go. Everything else can be worked with down up to a point. Let's see. Yeah, there's one coming out. You see, that's popping off, mostly. And that's going to unravel there. There we go. Yeah, so that's one running through there. So we've still, still got one known good here. Possibly the one over here is known good, but we'll see how we go. Yeah, so I sometimes see people just kind of, they pick stuff that's either, like, the other thing that people will do is actually pick things that are far too, far too, like, too tiny, basically. Stuff like this. Laceways Angora. Don't buy this in the thrift store. Don't try and unravel it. Don't do what I'm doing here. This is literally just me saying, like, I, you know what stream would love to see right now? It wants to see me making terrible fucking decisions. And... This is a perfect opportunity to demonstrate to you why it is you should not follow my example. Because I make terrible decisions and follow through with the consequences of my own stupidity. And I decide, yep, I'm going to go and frog a fucking felted Angora lace weight sweater. Anyway, don't do this. Be sensible. I'm not sensible. But I'm also too old to care. Gently, gently, gently. <laughs> no, like just I, I'm, not, I'm always wondering. I'm gonna lean over. I'm gonna lean over her enough, and eventually you're gonna see. Like there you go. You're gonna see my hair <laughs> or something in the the main camera. Like when is that gonna happen? Come on. It's just like that, and you can go through straight through that thread, and then there you go. You're scuppered, and you have another break. Now. Fun fact, I normally do a double fisherman bind when I'm actually repairing a break like that. And you can't. You can't actually use it on this stuff. It's too weak. You do basic granny knot and nothing else because anything else is just going to fall apart. Or you'll pull it to pull it tight. And what's going to happen is that you'll pull and the yarn will fall apart in your hands. It's just that thin and that delicate and... There you go, straight through the running thread with the point of the stiletto. Yeah. Again, we're performing yarn surgery. Like, there's a thread, all right? A little bit of pressure. And it's broken. <laughs> That's how bad the felting is here. Like, it's okay in this case, like, I'm breaking the threads anyway, because, like, I need to reel it back in a bit. And I'm, not, I'm still working my way back to a good running thread so it's it's okay it's not gonna it is what it is right now come on lift up lift up here we go now the last actually thing i i did before i started working on this sweater was a really a bright teal like a really brilliant deep teal colors uh cardigan and it was just beautiful, okay, don't get me wrong. It was just like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Like, the colour was phenomenal. It was dual colours straight out of the 80s. The style was very much the 80s. And I just looked at it and went, this is going to make some absolutely incredible bags. And I'm not even going to feel bad about tearing it to pieces. And lo and behold, I absolutely did not feel bad about tearing it to pieces. The thing came apart almost instantly. All right, I found the seam. I yanked it and the whole thing just kind of whoop it was gone and pieces just came apart in my hands it was it did have surgery across the top like they all do but it took me about five seconds just to like deconstruct that and get it back to the point where it had a raw edge and then I was just like literally under an hour and I had like an entire bag of this amazing brilliant teal colored yarn I think I might actually just cut this because I can't stop a brace it's stuck on something is it a cotton thread or not are you a cotton thread? Are you stuck on something else? What do you want? There we go. You're not a cotton thread. You're literally just tangled. On something. Undo. Come on. Oh, wait, no. See, that's almost unplied itself. So, pull it and it comes apart. Oh, yeah. Fun times. So, pull that out. This is this running thread, I believe. So let's very slowly pick this apart. That can come out as well. 
All right. Progress. Progress. Just where is that yeah. Where is that? Where's that thread? Is that thread there? Yeah, there we go. You can see all these tiny little bits all over the place here. And I've got it they're they're like essentially the, the other the pieces that I cut when I was cutting off the surging. And I cut through the, the essentially the bits of the running thread or whatever, and they all gotta come out. They all gotta come out, come off, whatever. And there we go. Let's continue. Let's continue pulling apart this mess. Very, very carefully. You know, at some point I should probably get on stream with something that isn't going to take a fucking age to tear apart. And I'll just demonstrate how fast you can deconstruct a sweater. Like, just how fast you can go through, tear this, tear the seams, cut the top, get back to a, like a good raw edge, and then just like spin the whole thing onto a mechanical winder, and there you go. Bam, bada bing, bada bang, bada bum, you're done. There's your yarn. And some people actually like to wash their yarn as well. I personally don't bother. Like, but mostly because I'm just making it into yarn anyway. I'm, like, I'm making it into bags anyway. And it's just like, I don't care enough to go to the trouble of, you know, going to all this, uh, this extra, all this extra is just to wash it so that it's unkinked. And like, I don't have the patience for that. I'm sorry. And I don't think it matters too much anyway. Like, not when you're actually going to work it again. It's like, I think if you were selling it, yes, you would probably have to wash it. Like, I mean, we know wash it more, like, and get to unkink it after the fact or whatever. But I don't, I don't care that much. Oh, that's a cotton thread, so I think we're going to cut that out. Oh. And also managed to cut... Also managed to cut the yarn. Fucking great. Such as is. It's so, so easy to catch that. So that was the end of like where one of the, it's like essentially I'm going to have to cut, I'm going to have to, once I actually rip it back to there, I'm going to have a join at some point. It's going to be, <sighs> it's fine. It happens. It happens quite a lot in the case of this yarn. Not a whole lot we can do about it. All right, let's just pull all this crap out. I sometimes wonder that maybe I should need to have like it should be like a wood shop or something where like I I end up having to have like an extractor fan or something for all the fucking fluff just so much fluff because like that right now that's just felting <laughs> all I want to try to do is get rid of it get rid get rid of it come back to the raw edge let's just come on let's get let's get just nothing but the bare stitches and all this crap. And again, every time I do that, if I'm not careful, it'll just, the, the point of the stiletto will just go whoop, straight through the yarn. Because it's felted on either side so much that it just can't, it can't pull against itself anymore. Like that's a piece that's felted. So I gotta get in there with the point. And either pull at that or pull the other side and very carefully tease the fibers. Nails help a lot in this case and I still think I should get like a hemostat of some kind. Like a essentially a pair of little pliers or whatever they can use to pull the fibers. They use them in like medical offices and stuff. Yarn surgery! We're back on that again. There's another running thread over here that's tangled in somewhere and I gotta see if I can get it out. Yeah, there we are. Come on, lift up. Lift up, I know you're broken there somewhere. There we go. Yeah. yeah, so we still have a we still have this this thread here is still still good. I need to pull this up. This is like bits all over the place, but they'll probably come out as soon as I grab this one and yank it. Like the little bitty bits don't really matter so much. They they matter because it's felted and it's not great as a result. But like as soon as I start unraveling, see there we go. That's a good thread. As soon as I start unraveling, they'll just all come out and it'll be fine. But there's just like the yarn is covered in them right now, and that needs to be 
picked off. And this is kind of cool. You can actually see the guard hairs there again. Little rabbity fur hairs. Careful, careful, careful. And fluff everywhere. It's a, so yeah, fluffy bunnies. Not just a stereotype. They are indeed fucking fluffy. I've actually wondered, alright, how do vegans feel about like sheep shearing? It's like, is wool, does wool count? Does wool not work because like because it comes from it comes from sheep. Even though the sheep aren't actually hurt by the shearing, they're just like we bred them to have all of these coats that nearly require shearing. So like they're, as far as I know, perfectly happy to be shorn because that's like what they do. I've always wondered. Like they're just, are they on board with shearing or not? Or is it just like, like animals actually being hurt or killed or something like that? Or like what's the, or dairy for that matter? Is it like, how do we feel about dairy? I mean, does that count? I don't know. That's the kind of thing I should probably look up. I don't care to right now because I'm busy with this. All right, let's do this. Because it's like, this is hardcore, kind of. <laughs> hardcore, gentle, kind of like pulling things apart super slowly because the aren't being a bitch. While also, while I'm just kind of randomly doing a stream of consciousness about what I think about vegans. Okay, hold on. There's a cotton thread. I gotta cut that. Come on, don't block the chin. There we go. Do you have plans for what you'll use this for? I do. Uh, this is 100% pure Angora, and this is also lace weight Angora, that's the kind of yarn that you can see here. It is incredibly, it is incredibly soft, all right? This stuff weighs almost nothing. It is incredibly soft, it is not very strong. This will never be possible to use this on its own once it's unfrogged here. Like, as soon as I have it, like, actually wrapped up into a skein of some kind, what's going to happen is that I'll double strand it with something and then probably use it in a shawl or some other kind of clothing. Something where like a little bit of softness with a little bit of strength will go a long way. That is still stuck in there. Oh god. Alright, alright, we've got a knot in here, folks. This thing was covered in beads. So we've got to try and undo the knot without cutting the Angora fibers. And let me tell you, that's a lot easier said than done, but the stiletto does make a massive difference. Alright, got that. Ah, there we go. Got it out. Okay. That's good. So now I can get a chance to actually unravel this without that not getting in the way. Or is there more? Nope, there we go. It's gone. Alright, that running thread's out. Okay. Yeah, no, this, this, I mean, to be honest, like, this is really beautiful fabric. And the thing is, is that because it's so felted, you could just use it as is. You wouldn't need to actually seal the edges again or serge it or whatever. It's literally felted to the point where you need to have something like, like this, the sewing stiletto, to actually get it out to begin with. So as long as you, if you just sew it on a regular seam, as if it's just like regular fabric, you can throw it through a sewing machine. Chances are it'll work just fine. You'll never need to worry about it coming apart. It's not going to come apart. It's going to be felted to the point that it will not come apart. And this is probably why I'm not going to felt the main part of this sweater. Like, I'll take the beads off, I'll put reduce it back to just plain fabric, but I'll see what else I can do with it that doesn't involve actually doing any frogging. Like, because if the fabric itself is still good, then it's still essentially pure Angora. It'd probably make it very soft, like, you know, I put it together, make like a scarf, make like some gloves or something, make a cowl. There's possibilities, at least. I don't necessarily have to frog the whole thing in order to get the use out of all of this material. Like, it's it's possible just to to make use of it as it is. Oh, come on. That's stuck. Why are you stuck? I don't want to be careful. I want to be so careful now, because if I do this wrong, it's just, there you go, it's popped. And as always, like, if, if, you're, if you're even just a little bit rough with it, then the point of the stiletto will go straight through the fibres and your the running thread will tear. And you will not be, like, you'll essentially have to just repair the break. It's, uh, it's a thing. So there we go. That's pulled out. <laughs> so ridiculous. It's now been two hours. Two hours and it's past eleven. Holy shit. 
All right, I'm going to finish the prep. I'm going to get to the end of this edge. Like, this is how much we've got left. And at that point, I should have enough of a raw edge to at least start unraveling. Um, and just to just to repeat myself, yes, this is kind of what you have to do when the top edge of a piece of, of, of machine knitted fabric has been surged, but the sides haven't. Your best case scenario, obviously, is that none of it is surged and you can just find the end of it and start unraveling from there. But more than likely what's going to happen is that the sides will be surged and the top will not be. I'm oh, sorry, the, the top will be surged, the sides will not be. Because of what I had here, like this, this is essentially the entire, the entire arm spread out flat. And I unpicked the seam down the arm. And now I have this flat piece of fabric and I'm going to just slowly frog my way through all of it to recover the Angora yarn. And it's just, I mean, just to, don't get me wrong, this stuff is going to take an age. Like, it's going to just take a while. It's doable, but it's not really worthwhile unless you've got something like Angora in it. This would just be hideously expensive anyway. And this is pure Angora as well. It's very, very soft, very delicate. If I mix this, with, I actually have a, a silk tull, which may pair very, very nicely with this because the tull is very shiny. But if I double strand it with this stuff, it'll also be super, super soft. So it's going to be shiny and like shiny beige with a soft kind of white, like, like white, uh, yeah, white angora around it. That might have an interesting effect. And yeah, 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 I never know. I might throw, I might throw through the spinning wheel and we'll see what we can get out of it. But yeah, this spinning thread's gonna go. I like to just put pick this out. And. You can see that I can barely see like any of the fabric, like, any, like I can barely see the actual edge of the fabric here. Like where is that running thread? You can barely pick it out from there, but it will come out eventually. I just need to, oh wait, no, here we go. There's another thread here. That, that's gone. Okay, so this is like that running thread. We're gonna have a, you can see now that we've actually got a bunch of them. We've got this one, this one, this one, and another two, three over here. Like. Eventually, I'll break. I'll break it back to the the running thread, like the last known good, and the rest of them can just be ripped out and and, and you know tossed into my tossed into my my jar of threads here, which I keep storing up with the intention of stuffing them into a pillow of some kind. Oh, slowly, I'll have to move this down a bit so you can actually see this. I think this is also, this is single ply, or sing, like a single ply and lace weight angora, pure white, undyed. I mean, I can't imagine what this have actually would have cost back in the day. Admittedly, this was the 80s and, you know, apparently everything from that time is incredibly questionable. But I do kind of wonder, like, what would you, what would you have paid for a sweater like this? Something that has, like, is literally covered in sequins and beads, all right? Literally covered in them, like there's an entire, that's all of sequins and beads, and that's just stuff I've picked off this sleeve, not the rest of it. I kind of, I do wonder, like, what, what is it actually, oh, here we go, slowly, slowly. Like, what would you, what would you have paid for this? Like, was this an expensive one? Was it designer? I mean, I mean, it's god awful, don't ask, don't, don't get me wrong. It's soft because the yarn is gorgeous, but the rest of it was just a fashion disaster. You're the first person I've watched her to talk about most of this. Just wanted to say you've been quite informative. I've had a lot of random questions that you answered like 60 seconds later, just asking. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, if you have any specific questions about it, I do a lot of this kind of thing. I think reclaiming yarn is an excellent way to, like, it's an excellent way to get yarn that you would not normally be able to get and also to kind of give you ideas for making use of yarn that you might not, not normally want to try because you just can't afford the cost of it. Like, especially if you need like an entire sweater of yarn, okay? A really good way to get a sweater's worth of yarn is to go to a thrift store and buy a sweater and then unravel it. Like that, to be honest, is how I would normally find a lot of my sweater yarn. I wouldn't go buy the stuff. I'd literally just go and look, go find a sweater that is in it, that has good yarn, but maybe in like from, I don't know, <laughs> a, a terrible fashion choice or something like that. And then just work on it and recover all the yarn and then just start re reworking it or, or re-crocheting it or whatever. And you do get incredibly interesting stuff. 
like a lot of the and I'd, I'd see I don't want to knit a lot of I don't want to knock a lot of the blends that you can get from from doing this kind of thing like because a lot of like and you just really have to know what to look for especially when you're looking at what seams to look for like the v-stitch seam is the thing that you're gonna that's gonna save you the most time they just essentially knowing what a serge seam looks like even under something that's very badly felted like this nonsense and then finding like finding something that is not surged at the sides you may you're going to spend a while not finding it's finding something that's not surged at all uh i mean you're good that 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 may be like pine the sky kind of stuff you'll find stuff that's not surged at the sides but is surged at the top and that's just going to mean a little bit of extra work when you actually start disassembling it it's always worth the effort i think and this is it's definitely a skill that I think everybody should have if you're going to knit and crochet like definitely get into this learn how to do it even even if you know how to pick apart your own your own stuff you know because I do that on the regular as well it's like I'll have something that I've made and I just like yeah I'm tired of it I'm gonna just I'm gonna just frog it and then work on and you know work something else or whatever now I'm down to this corner here and we're we're starting to get actually get close to the the, the first I would say a proper running thread except that this corner because I said before the corners are always a bit of a bugbear there so that is that the last known good we need an intact running thread obviously we've got a whole bunch here that are not intact and we need to make sure all of them are removed and we start from the first like whole running thread when they're actually starting to unravel like we don't want too many breaks that's always the thing and we're going to have a lot of breaks here um sometimes if i get like running threads that aren't like I essentially get stuff that's not as badly felted as this and if i can do that then it's just as easy to like pick a point somewhere down here like if you know like what if you know like what's a good point to kind of get to it just essentially start there like cut it at the edge and then start unraveling a single running thread and then take that piece off and dump it because you know then you let the last the last known good running thread but like it's not really going to be possible here there's just all the, the running threads are just way too small so we're just going to have to work with what we've got really and that means we gotta slowly pull them out if you want to destroy my sweater is that a reference to something i i just i'm sure it's a reference to a song but I can't remember off the top of my head what song it is. Do tell me if you do. And also, oh, <laughs> all the threads. <laughs> yeah, there must be a reference to a song. I don't know what song it is. I'm sorry. I I, I don't know all of the music. I know a lot about yarn. That's about it. Oh, okay. Here we go. So this is starting to come out. Can we pull it safely now? That was the question. I don't think we can. Lift, lift, lift. And you can see that tiny felted pit there. That's the one that's actually catching. So take the stiletto and just kind of pull it. There we go. All right. So is this safe to pull this? Probably not because it is still quite felted, but we'll see. No. Nope. <laughs> these are undone the sweater song oh okay the sweater song yeah all right i i may have heard of something like that Where, did, is that the ones that they're like famous for or something i can't remember okay so that's the point there we're kind of we're, we're definitely the, the felted so we're gonna have to tug it out or else we might lose it carefully carefully no it's still an issue No, it's not coming. Yeah, so we've got another knot here, I think. So let's. Oh no, I think we actually have another running. Yeah, we have another running thread underneath it, so we're going to have to lift it out. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we've got all these little bits here. We're going to have to pull all these out. Yep. So that's. This is our good running thread. This is the non-good running thread because it's broken and we're gonna have to pull it out 
Uh, yeah, okay. So there's that one gone. All right, it's fine, it's fine. Now, the other thing as well is that you can't let it get too far away before you actually start to pull it. Like this, this running thread, yeah, this is definitely another one of the ones here that's going to come out. And this is okay. Because, again, we're, the, the goal here is that we're eventually going to pull it back to, like, a whole running thread from which we can start unraveling the whole piece. There we go. That's gone. All right. Now let's do this. Let's pull that out. You can see that, like, the, the thread here that I'm lifting with the stiletto is this one. Just there. And we just got to loosen it and the, the felting will come out again. Uh, it's like sliding, sliding off the desk. Now you can see this actually, this this halo of fuzz. All right. This is bloody annoying, is what it is. Like this is the fuzz that is now essentially taking over my desk, and I will absolutely need to use the lint roller on myself to kind of unfuzz. Let that go. Now is this this running thread? Oh, it is fantastic. Okay, so this is good. We now have. Well, this one, we're back to this one. This is now a, this is now our known good running thread. So we can undo this. Lift, lift, lift. Yeah. Okay. Now, where does this break? Does it break? As soon as we get to the point where we where we know that we're on an unbroken thread, there are no more breaks at the top, at least, due to us cutting the surge portion. Oh, there it is. Okay. So there we go. That piece. Now, this is what this stuff is like, all right? If you see how just... I don't even know if this shows up very well on camera. Just how... Just how floaty this is. This is so light. It doesn't feel like anything at all in my hands. It just feels like... Like nothing, it's like I'm holding nothing. It's definitely there, but it's... There's literally nothing in that. It doesn't feel like anything. It's so, so, so light. Okay, well, I'm gonna put that all away now. Okay, so that's okay. So we've got, we're down to, let's see. This is all just fuzz. We've almost got a good, good edge here. Let's see, we're going down here. All right, so I think we actually might have like, if we could pull out these through two threads, then then we're going to be out of no good. So let's see if we can actually just pull these. Yeah, we can. All right, let's see. And I really need to kind of check like, where is the camera? I keep moving stuff around and not being aware of where this is. No, this is going to come. All right. Come on, on felt. Now, if you're doing this, spreading spreading the running threads or pulling this apart with your fingers is worth doing because it starts, it essentially helps these threads to separate just a little bit that are very felted. So you can start it now, you see, there you go. <laughs> That's just gone. <laughs> so we got to go back to this running thread. This is another one back here. So where does this one start from? Okay, yeah. All right. Ah, my cat will sort their sweater out in no time. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say so, yes, but I feel like this would be detrimental to our ultimate goal, which is to actually recover this yarn. I don't have a cat, and at this point I'm afraid to get one, in case they decide that my yarn is a thing to be played with. Also, I don't know how I'd feel about all the hair getting on everything. Because, you know, I've already got the yarn for that. All right, now we're going to start pulling. Oh, tense stuff. Okay, yeah. Like I said, if this is very felted, pull the threads apart with your fingers. Pull these, like, stretch the running threads as much as you can. It will pull the, the felting apart and start getting it to want to move, or at least pull it out. You also should pull it straight up. If you pull it straight back or to the other side, then it's probably going to tear 
and I've done this several times. Like I, I did, but basically I did this several times when I was actually unfrogging the other sleeve. Now that's a little bit too felted. If at any point you've got to watch, you really do have to watch it. And if at any point you think that the it, that it's going to tear, you essentially have to stop and use a stiletto. Or I mean, you can use a stitch ripper, but in fairness, I like using a stiletto. I think like the stitch ripper like introduces the possibility that you'll tear even more than that, and the stiletto is already pointy enough to really tear through this. So you got to be super careful with it. That no, that's fuzz. That's fuzz. That's fine. Like you have to be so goddamn careful with this stuff, <laughs> getting the running threads out. So you literally just stretch and yank. And you do it slowly, you do it carefully, and being super careful to not pull it too hard, because as soon as you pull it too hard, the felting will catch. And like I'm gonna have to pull this a little bit out with the with the stiletto. The felting essentially will catch in the yarn will tear. Because of this, these fibers are so are so thin. <laughs> They're so thin and felted that like you they just you just have to be super careful with them. All right, I'm gonna pull this down and then can I do a whole piece here? I can, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay, so that's as much as we got. That's the first piece and then it broke. <laughs> But we're getting there. This is like there's a there's a I know that there's a good running thread around here somewhere. There's a break. Let's see. Can we pull this out now? There we go. Back again. Now, in fairness, I should probably take the bit that I just pulled out, tie it on, and start winding there. But I want to be sure that I have a good that I have the good running thread first. Like I have a whole a whole piece. Like because if there are more breaks, I don't I don't want to start with a load of breaks. From the surge, from cutting at the surging anyway. So maybe we'll just be super gentle with this. Get the last of the fuzz off at least. Stretch, pull. Now I actually kind of tried to do a thing where I literally laid this thing out and pinned it down, and started to to pull it. But I found that like by and large it just does not make a difference. The stuff is so thin and so weak and so prone to tearing anyway that it just, it really does not matter. You just have to be gentle with it anyway. And having it stretched out permanently doesn't really do you any more favors. You'd end up just having to do the same thing. You pull it slowly, you pull it carefully. You watch for when it's going to, when it might tear. And you, if you think it's going to tear, you use the stiletto to pull it, to, to pull the fibers essentially and to pull the felting apart. Yeah, there we go. Pull that apart. Now, now here's the thing. In this corner, in this corner, I absolutely have to use the use the needle. You cannot just pull it directly out. The corners will always felt. Well, they, well, they they'll be felted the, 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 with this angora anyway. So that like you can't just pull it and expect it to unravel. Like it won't. It will tear first. So you end up having to pull this little. The next running thread out and then pull them back and forward a bit and kind of work them loose because they will have felted into that corner you can see it right there the way it's catching and then use the stiletto to pick the fibers and then pull now okay that's actually looking pretty good i think we've actually got a we may just have we may just have a good running thread something that has no further breaks in it so let's see You felting up you are. Now if you pull it and you get this, that's that's a felted patch that you need to pick out. Like that. And then pull more. Fuzz. You can usually tell if you get like if you if you're very gentle with it, you'll be able to tell. And like look how look how much felting is going on here. Like I can just like, if I just hold this here, use a stiletto, pull that, here we go, pull out some more, 
Let's get a single unbroken. Once we get a single unbroken line across the entire, we're like, man, that's broken there, but fuck it, who cares? Once we get a single unbroken line across the entire length of the top, then you know that you're ready to go and you can start winding onto your spindle or whatever. Now, is this gonna, yeah, there we go. Undo that felt. Undo that. And again, I just had to listen to say it ain't so. <laughs> if I wee through the song, gets me every time. Yeah. Too damn much felting, I would say. Look, honestly, yes, there is way too much felting in this. I would not abs I would not recommend this for anybody in a normal frame of mind. I'm literally only doing this because it is 100% Angora. It is incredibly, incredibly soft. It will be worth the effort to, because it, it absolutely takes a goddamn age to really unravel this. It took me, like, I, when I unraveled the other sleeve, it took me a solid week on and off and hours and hours of time and so many breaks because I was just going too fast, okay? Not that you'd notice anyway, if this was, if this was like, like double-stranded with, or, or plied with another, another stronger yarn, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't notice. You'd never notice the breaks. It's just, there's just too, it's too thin. But like, it just, it would not, absolutely would not be worth doing, except for the fact that like, it's pure Angora. And it is just that soft and it's just that high quality. Like, I'm serious, like, I'm serious. This is just not worthwhile otherwise. No one should do this. I'm just insane. Okay, here we go. We're almost at the end of the round. Now I can feel it pulling there. there. That was ready to tear. So I got to pull it back a bit. I got to pull it like as close to this as possible. So it gives less of a chance for the stuff that I've already pulled out. Like you don't want to pull it back here or whatever. That's just giving a chance for all of this to tear. You got to pull it like right up next to, right up next to where it's coming off the piece. Now, for the record, if you're doing this with an actual mechanical like winder on your end that isn't this felted, then you can essentially just like hold the, th oh, there it goes. <laughs> we don't have a solid piece yet. You could literally just hold it up and just like whap it on thing and just start cranking it and it'll unravel, you'll be fine. Yeah, that's gone. Is this the next running thread? Are you, are you it? What are you doing? Where is our next known good? Come on. Like it's broken somewhere. Where is it broken? Are you felt it there? Oh, that looks like a knot. Like it's also not helped by the fact that this one is just a fucking mess because it's had so many beads and everything pulled off it. Okay, here we go. All right, that's it. We now have a known good. A known good list. All right, I'm going to pull out the camera for a second now. There we go. Okay, so after all of that, after, hang on, two and a half hours of bullshit, we now have a good raw edge, all right? This is now a single straight, a single straight edge, okay? And we can start unraveling from this down, all right? This is the size of it, okay? The size of the piece that, that I'm going to unravel, all right? It has taken us, no joke, two and a half hours just to get to the point where we can start unraveling it because there's so much involved with deconstructing this. And I, in fairness, you can see that this stuff is incredible. The drape of this is amazing. It's light, it's so light and fluffy. It really is, as it is, so light and fluffy. This is, honestly, this is just like, a, here I can show you what it is like to the worst possible case scenario. You're trying to, to unravel something that literally does not want to be unraveled because it's so badly fucking felted. <laughs> but it's worth, like, it, for something like Angora, I think it's worthwhile. For everything else, no, not really. So. Okay, final things I will say to you. If you're in a thrift store and looking for stuff that you want to unravel, check for things like rayon, check for um, rayon, cotton, try to avoid viscose unless it's mixed with something else. It tends to be way too slippery. Look for silk. Silk is usually pretty good. Silk blends are can, can really be some of the most, the nicest yarn that you will work with. Um, cotton blends are usually pretty good. Cotton and nylon is definitely one of my favorites. Check, check wool very carefully because it could be felted like this. And if it is, forget it, you, it's not worth your time. You could just go and buy it in the store, it'd be easier. Um, I've come across things like cashmere and it felts like this. I don't know if it's worth it. Like this is, Angora is far more rare and you're not likely to see it as often. Cashmere you actually see every once in a while. Um, 
there's a, I don't know there's like a, 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 there's there's a, you know the easiest to stuff to get would be stuff like acrylic and polyester and I generally do not bother unless it's something really unusual you know not going to be worth my while um I like to go for actual natural fibers I think that's the thing to kind of focus on cotton and and that kind of thing now the other thing as well is that like be aware that stocking it's going to be the easiest thing to frog crochet is its own thing and if, unless you know crochet I would not recommend picking it up because you would need to know it very precisely in order to figure out how it's actually constructed and where you can actually deconstruct it like stocking it is easily it is absolutely the easiest thing to actually frog to unravel if you want to reclaim yarn like I have no fear at all of taking any kind of crocheted stuff and tearing it apart but again I've been crocheting for years I know exactly what I'm looking at and where to actually find the ends and all this kind of thing like if you're going to just start out with this look for basic stockinette basic ribbing and don't get too fancy after that because you're going to do your head in trying to figure out where the ends are if nothing else um the other thing as well is that you're going to find that machine made stuff comes in pieces and it's not just a case of like the body the arms and everything kind of being seen together kind of thing no it's like you can have something as weird as like the 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 actual ribbing being a separate piece that you have to figure out where the end of that is and unravel that separately or maybe out of order because you have to deconstruct these things in the order like in the reverse order to which they were actually created okay and that means that if something was created with like the front piece and the back piece went together and then the ribbing was put onto it and then the arms were put on and then whatever like you have to essentially have to do that in reverse order arms come off first then ribbing then back and front come up come apart if you do it out of order, and this is especially true for crochet, you're going to find yourself getting tangled up pretty quickly. So you've got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, so this is what I say. It's like I'm going to probably teach a class on just unraveling. And I would absolutely, if you're going to start off with this, simple things. Look for a basic cotton stockinette jumper to start, like sweater to start with or a cardigan cardigans are easy always look at the inside tags tags are always on the not in the usually on the inside down at the bottom over on the left hand side of the garment it's usually where I find them um and don't bother if it's acrylic unless you really like it and no lace weight stuff like a lot of machine made knits can be as thin as this don't Pick something that's at least DK or something, just at least a little bit bigger so you can see what you're doing. This is not representative. This is because I'm insane and I do this all the time. Um, we'll see. Next week, I think I'll probably, but I'll bring on, I'll go and look for something that will be more representative of what it is actually like to unravel like a sensible piece, something that like you, you, that you'd be able to pick apart. You know, I'll bring an actual sweater, something, and we'll, we'll take it apart step by step, and I should be able to do it inside the two hours I normally stream for, like. I'll keep working on this as well. We'll see how we get on with it. Oh. Anyway, look, I don't got to rain into anybody because it's crazy o'clock and I want to go to bed. And I feel bad about rain and running. So I will, I will hopefully see you guys next week. All right. Hope you all have, uh, I'm sorry to be like running away now if you just got here. Um, I'll be back next week with more weird unraveling or crochet stuff. So have a good week, guys. And thanks very much for watching and hanging out with me and stuff. Bye.